good morning. I think it's probably morning for most of the folks who uh, who would be interested in this. But welcome from anywhere that you're located. NASCAR. Pocono 500. Not the easiest of the 500s by far, but the one I felt like doing today. I hope you're all doing well out there. Welcome to NASCAR Racing. 1986 season of NASCAR. It's out in the chat. The mid 80s were awesome. And, and unfortunately, there's not a ton of really high quality footage. The broadcast exists. You can go out there and, and watch uh, watch a lot of the races from from this time frame. But the, uh, the quality of the broadcast is not not what you'd be used to these days. So it's a little hard to see into this time period, but it was super cool. The cars moved very like in a very cool way. Uh, the, you know, a lot of different drivers were competitive. And uh, overall, it was just an electric time, I guess, in NASCAR. But yes, 9.30 on the East Coast here. Felt like doing this today. Uh, was thinking for a long time about doing some NASCAR 2003 stuff. And I have no idea if this is a one-off or going to turn into a, a lot of... A lot of different streams and stuff over time, but we're here for the 1986 Pocono 500. And our driver is Buddy Roscoe, if you can see the name. Hopefully you can. This is the 95 uh, Sadler Brothers car. They were a pretty small team, most notably for kicking off the career of one Davey Allison. And Davey, in our 1986 season, as in the real one, he, he entered this car... Um, in six or seven races leading up to Pocono. Pocono is the 13th race of the season, 12th race. Is it 13th? So the Sadler brothers had entered uh, Davy Allison in, in a handful of races, Daytona, the Super Speedways, Richmond. He failed to qualify for a couple of them. He did really well on the short tracks. So I think he got a nearly a top 10 at Richmond. Uh, but they didn't enter Pocono, and so uh, our driver here, Buddy Roscoe, has entered with the Sadler Brothers for Pocono. It's kind of a one-off first race. Got the rookie stripe on the back. And uh, we'll see how we do. I'll say this now. I, I've set this up to be quite difficult. So I am hopeful that I can, one, finish the whole race. Because it is it is no joke doing 200 laps around Pocono in one of these things. So finish the whole race. And then if I can get a top 20 or so, I think that would be pretty awesome. Um, so that's the type of performance I think everybody's doing. Depending on strategy and stuff, potentially I could uh, scoop by and, and get higher than that, but I think getting in a crash is a very real possibility of my own doing or of the AI. Uh, this is an AI race. I'm racing 39 other cars. We're racing the field that competed, for the most part, at this actual race. And so we'll go through, uh, go through real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the steering wheel on just yet. But we'll, we'll skip real uh, real quick so you can just get familiar with the different drivers. Dale Earnhardt, of course, in the Richard Childress 3. I think he was leading the championship coming into this race. And uh, uh, was going for his second championship, which I think he got during this season. We got Jeffrey Bodine in the uh, number 5. DK Ulrich in the 6. This car, Richard Petty actually drove this car. I think at the World 600, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, he didn't qualify in his, so he, he hopped in DK's car. There's a There's a few pictures of it out there with STP, big STP logos on it. Kyle Petty in the 7-Eleven car. We got Bobby Hillen in one of the two Miller, uh, Miller American cars. Bill Elliott, of course, awesome Bill. This was in his heyday for sure. This is when, when I mean, Bill had a long heyday, but this was, this is the height, I think. We got Randy LaJoy. This is one of the cars, I had to put this one together so that we'd have the, uh, the set. Uh, with Daryl Waltrip in one of uh, Junior Johnson's cars. The other Junior Johnson car for Neil Bonnet. Ricky Rudd, 15. We got Poncho Carter, the IndyCar star in this uh, Roger Hamby. I don't know anything about this car. I'm sure some folks in the chat might. But number 17, Kmart car. We've got Eric Freelander. Uh, uh, sorry, Tommy Ellis in Eric Freelander's 18 car. Got Rick Newsome. I'm doing this for myself a little bit, too, so that's for racing. I know who I'm driving against, but Rick Newsome in the 20 car. I think that was his own entry. Bobby Allison, of course, in the 22 Miller High Life. So uh, Bobby Hillen and Bobby Allison are very similar cars. 
Michael Waltrip, rookie as well, in this 23 car. We've got Buddy Boys, painted this one up as well. I think they're fairly accurate, but this is a Pontiac. Tim Richmond. Tim Richmond was the winner of this race. He swept the Pocono races in 1986, and he uh, he did it in dramatic fashion, especially we're racing the first of the two Pocono races. The second one, you should go watch the highlights of that race. It's it's pretty wild. We'll talk about it during the race probably. But Joe Rutman in the 26. So we got Rusty Wallace in the 27. Allegard Carr. Uh, Kale Yarborough, of course. Harry Gant in the 33. Richard Petty in the 43. Terry Labonte. The Piedmont Airlines scheme. I like that one. Morgan Shepard in the Race Hill Farm car. This is one that I'm uh, very familiar with. I didn't realize Morgan had driven this car for a while. We got uh, Jerry Cranmer in Hilton in James Hilton's car. This one's, I think, similar to what it was like. I couldn't really find some pictures. Uh, Jimmy Means in his 52 car, of course. We got Benny Parsons. Benny Parsons, old BP, in the 55 Copenhagen. Eddie Beerschwall in the 64 car. We got Phil Parsons in the 66. Buddy Harrington in his 67 car. J.D. McDuffie, of course in his classic 70. We got Dave Marcus for his own team, the 71, the Helen Ray special. Jack Eli racing for Bobby Wawick. I think this one's also similar to what actually ran. Jody Ridley in the 75 car. We got Chet Phillip, who I've never heard of, in the 81. Bobby Gerhardt. Bobby Gerhardt, the ARCA, I know him from ARCA racing. He was in the mid-2000s, was really good at Daytona and Talladega, the super speedways. But he entered this race. He entered this race for quite a few years, and he drove the 85. Ignore the uh, the shoddy Photoshop work to make it an 85. But the 85, we got Buddy Baker. I love... Go Google this paint scheme. Uh, the real-life one. I mean, this one's well done for NASCAR 2003, but the real-life car is beautiful. Chrome numbers and everything. But Buddy Baker in the 88. We got Ken Schrader, who we just saw at Stafford last week. Ken Schrader in the 90, Ronnie Bouchard in the 98, and I think that, that rounds out our field, Ronnie Bouchard there, from New England as well. So, it's a great field, I love all the paint schemes and everything, it's an iconic time. So we'll jump in, Pocono Raceway, we're going to do, try to do the full race today, got realistic weather on, full, as realistic I guess as you can do it. You'll see I've got the AI on 100%, for those that do a lot of NASCAR 2003, you can adjust the AI in so many ways, but I've tried to make them pretty difficult. Uh, I wouldn't want to just run away with the race. So, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be tough to beat. Uh, and like I said, a top 20 at the end of this thing would be excellent, but we'll jump in. I'm going to do a couple quick laps of practice just to make sure it's all looking good and sounding good and uh, show you the track, although we'll get plenty of time to see it and then we'll hop straight into qualifying. So it's going to be a long race. So, you have plenty of time to experience what Pocono has to offer. Ricky Rudd's in the 15. 15 car. What's that, Bud Moore's car? All right, let me just look here. Pocono 80's setup. So I've been tweaking on my setup a little bit. And uh, I've got it to be a little understeery. Just, just especially for the beginning of the race. So that um, I don't have to worry about spinning out here as we're trying to avoid everybody. Come out now. This the shift from second to third is very long. You can hear the gears bog down, but that's because we're going to be shifting. <laughs> we're going to be shifting on an oval in this time period, which is which is uh, difficult with the H pattern. Yeah, this is the version of a Pocono from Thunder '98. It's it's a '90s version. So the only thing that looks different is that the walls are not the red and white, you know, stripes that you would have had in this time period. But otherwise, it's like spot on. I've done a little bit of work just to update some of the objects next to the track, just to make it look a little more appropriate for the time. Those are some, some of the shared objects. So I've got some Richard Petty logos and stuff on them. All right, we'll come around onto the front stretch. So what I've been doing is shifting down a third in, in the third turn, just to get that extra run out. And it seems to be a bit quicker for me, but it, you know, it's a little bit more to think about. And uh, if we get really strung out and I've got nobody I'm chasing, I might just keep it in fourth. 
Oh yeah, we've got Tim Richmond. For those that missed the run through the grid at the start, uh, I've got the full real grid that took part at Pocono in this race in 1986. There's one driver missing, and I, I'm replacing him, I guess, in theory, but I could not find, I forget his name, but I could not find any pictures of the car, what it would have looked like or anything, so felt like the right one to replace. Jeffrey something, towards the back of the grid, I think he finished like second to last. All right, car's feeling good. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on the weather. I've found if it's really hot, the car is very slidey and it's it can be easy to lose the rear end and I might want to tighten it up even more than I have it already. It's pretty tight at the moment. Yeah, I agree. Tim's the number 25 Folgers car is one of the nicest. But I, I could say that about half the field. There's so many really good paint schemes, and they're all extremely simple. Actually, I think I've got old Tim coming up behind me here. He's got a lot of speed. It's right on my tail. It's, it is Tim. <laughs> So I think it's going to be near impossible to beat the, the fastest cars in this race, unless there's some weird... You, you never know with NASCAR 2003. But I do think I can place pretty well. Here comes Tim up the inside. Let him on by. I got to do... I got to practice the real NASCAR give and take. I think if I try to drive this flat out for... The full 200 laps it's gonna be uh i don't want to be doing stuff like that it's gonna be really easy to make a mistake at some point so if a car is faster than me at a certain time it might just be worth letting them by and kind of falling seeing where my pace is before i make any crazy moves yeah davy allison had great schemes i mean i love the the 90s texaco Havilland one but the uh, Havilland car from the 80s with the white or early 90s as well, the white nose and the chrome numbers and stuff. I, I really like chrome numbers, I think. All right, things are feeling good. I'm going to uh, jump into the pits here. We'll practice a pit stop, although I've got pretty full fuel at the moment, but it'll be good practice. Now, I do have a pit lane speed limit on. I'd love to play this without, uh, without a speed limit at all, but the AI need a, need a pit speed limit if we're not going to have some major accidents in the pits. So I've got it set to 70 miles an hour. Uh, you can see my speed, by the way, in the top right-hand corner. I've got the whole little HUD thing on the top, so it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, it's interesting that the wall is gray like this. It actually was that way. If you search for pictures around like 92, 93, for some reason they painted the wall gray. So it's a... Uh, not ideal, I'd say. All right, we'll come down to the pits. Get on the brakes. Get down to 70. That'll be 70. So it's right about 5,500 on the tack. And we're really gonna have to exercise. You see on my dashboard, it says patience. I think that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be the key to doing this. Got that cruise. So. That would be an all right pit entry. I think I really, really uh, chased it to the line there. All right, I appreciate folks jumping in. I didn't plan really to do this at all. I thought about it yesterday a little bit and then I was like, this morning, this, this feels like something fun to do. All right, so based on the practice speeds right now, I'm, I'm 16th, which is not too bad. Not too bad. All right, so we're going to jump into qualifying here. For qualifying, I'm just going to run my race set up and uh, just don't want to crash. Try to get in front of the slowest cars. And see, see where I can put this on the field, but I'm not sure where I'll be able to qualify. It's a two-lap qualifying. I don't, I don't know if that's authentic or not, but we do have two laps. So whatever the better time is, And in NASCAR 2003, the other cars qualify kind of at the same time you do. So we'll find out as we uh, as we go 
This is the Thunder 98 Pocono. I should have put it in the description. I apologize for that. I'll, I'll put it in in the replay. And uh, this is the, the main 86 Cup car set. I've, like I said in the intro, I've painted a few cars and added a few cars just to pad out the uh, this race specifically. But it's mostly the one that you'll find pretty much everywhere. All right, come around to get the green flag then. There's no warm-up lap in NASCAR. It's just straight on. Up the fourth gear. Come across the line. Just nice and smooth lap. Don't need to set any records here. Bit of an arc there. You can hear the tires just wanted to give up. We've got plenty of grip on them. Brand new tires. During the runs, the tires give up a lot. And uh, it's going to be... It's going to be one of the main things we'll work on today is, is how the car evolves over the run. Coming to the tunnel turn, it's always a tricky one. A little bit early on the throttle, I had to feather it on the exit there. All right, this should be an okay lap. We'll come into turn three, right before the tube marker. Get it down into third gear. Just a little heel toe. Make sure we don't lock the rear diff. All right, walk that little crack that's on the inside of that pavement there. Back on the front stretch, we'll rev it extra high here for the qualifying laps. A 162.3, that puts me in 24th. 24th there through the first round. There's 40 cars. So that's pretty good. That's halfway up the grid. Yeah, there's almost no catch fence around the track, too. It's a, it's a flight into the bushes, I guess, if we had a big one. All right, turn one there was all right. Come down into the tunnel turn again. Oh, a little bit wide. Slide the car there. Need to really be careful about sliding during the race because I will wear out, wear out the tires. Not the best downshift. This slot might be a little bit slower than my first one. Get on the accelerator though. All right, coming across the line. Slid back to 30th based on everybody else's. I'll leave it in third here though. Oh, a bit better. 29th. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. 29th position there in the qualifying. Ugh. Not too bad. I'm, I'm all right with that. That puts me at least in front of some of the slowest cars. But we'll take a look at the starting grid here. We'll line them up for the race as well. So you can see them out there. Why don't we actually look at the uh, at the real, real cars Driver for the starting grid? Actually, I don't know if this is going to work well. Yeah, it'd be tough to uh, tough to get close to him. All right, let's look here. We'll look here then. So Dale Earnhardt gets the pole. Dale Earnhardt with a 166.5. 166.5. Daryl Waltrip in the one with a 165.9. So wow, Earnhardt's is pretty uh pretty fast. I'm actually using so for physics, I'm using Cup physics. Although the Aero 88 mod typically has truck physics, I like the Cup a lot more. So we're quite a bit faster than they were in real life, which uh, honestly. Honestly, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for because this is going to be a long race. But we, yeah, I think we're like six miles an hour faster than the real pole time. Tim Richmond, though, the real winner, starts in third place. Ricky Rudd in fourth. Terry Labonte in fifth place. Rusty Wallace from Bobby Allison, Neil Bonnet, Harry Gant, and Bill Elliott in the top ten. We look back down through the rest of the grid then. Bobby Hill and Jr. in 11th from Jeff Bodine. Morgan Shepard, Richard Petty, and Kyle Petty starting uh, side by side there, father and son. Michael Waltrip in 16th, Joe Rutman from Jimmy Means, Buddy Arrington, the other buddy in the field, and uh, Dave Marcus in 20th. Continue on down, JD McDuffie in 21st, uh, Ellis in 22nd, Kelly Arborough, Eddie Beerschwall, and Buddy Baker for 25th. The Parsons as well, I think brothers near each other. Um, then Ken Schrader, ahead of ourselves, Buddy Roscoe. Uh, Randy LaJoy towards the bottom, and I cannot see the bottom. There we go. Ronnie Bouchard. We got, uh, what is it, Chit Phillip? I'm trying to remember. Joe Cranmer, DK Ulrich, Bobby Gerhardt, Joe Ridley, Rick Newsom, Poncho Carter, Jimmy, or Jay Eli, what's, I forget his name. And then uh, Buddy Boys at the back of the grid. Canadian driver, I believe. 
Yeah, Dale Sr. has uh, has taken the pole, and he's quite quick. He's quite quick. All right. 200 laps. It is a mar it's an endurance race. These races are endurance races, first and foremost. So uh, the main goal is finishing today. Got to get through the start. Might give and take a little bit just to to get a get a spot on the track. I expect there to be some pretty long green flags, but in my testing, there's been yellow flags kind of randomly. Not all from myself. So we we probably will get some yellow flags. I hope at some point, but not too many. And uh, hopefully there's not any big accidents that I can't avoid or something. And uh, if it goes green, I think I can go about 40 laps on a tank of fuel. 40 laps. That would be to the fuel tank. The tires wear out a lot. So at some point, we'll have to see. If, if everybody else starts pitting, I'm going to have to pit as well. Because you'll be so much faster on a new set of tires that it uh, that it... It won't work out. So we'll see how far everybody goes. I have a feeling we'll be pitting before the 40 laps, which is going to make the strategy interesting, but we'll kind of work backwards from the end of the race as we get there, if we get there. Um, and uh, and know that we could stretch it to about 40 laps if if it went green. All right. I think, I think that's it. We'll get started. I'm a little bit nervous. I've never done a NASCAR 2003 race on a stream. I don't think. And uh, some weird stuff can happen in these races. It's just, you never know <laughs> with the way the AI is and stuff. So we'll have to see. Have to see if everything can go smoothly. I hope it's a good race, though. Roll out of the pits. That was the, the least enthusiastic driver start your engines of all time. I've got Randy LaJoy on my right there in the 07. If you want to see a crazy crash, search for his uh, wreck at Daytona, I think in 84. I don't know how he survived it. It's it's that brutal of a crash. Uh, but he did, and he's driving a very similar car in this race. All right, and I've got Benny Parsons in front with a Ken Schrader on his right there. So I'm in good company. A Kenny Bouchard behind me. Should be good. I know the sponsors are uh, are interesting. I don't endorse any of the products being shown off in this video. We're merely reliving some history. We'll see how our old old driver can do today. All right, cross your fingers for no pileups here early on. I hope we can get a little bit strung out and just see how the car feels before some crazy stuff happens. I do into okay, Red Baron Pizza. We'll talk about the sponsors as we go and which ones I. Uh, Doors. This is the Aero 88 mod and uh, the 1986 car set with a few extra cars that I've put together. All right, here we go, though. Coming to the green flag. Remember, the shift from second to third is very coming long, so I gotta, to gotta time it right. Green flag is out. I lucked out because I can't actually see the starter. Get it up to third. Man, we bogged down a lot. Got a Thunderbird coming to my right. Three wide behind me. And in front. Take it nice and easy into turn one. Get it up into fourth as we get to the end of the straightaway and just let the car glide on in. A little bit sideways there, but it's all right. Get on the throttle. All right. Ron Bouchard right behind me, giving me the bump. into the tunnel turn here. All right, everybody making it through. There, there's not a lot of places to go if things pile up into the tunnel turn. We'll let off the throttle a little bit early into turn three. This guy's leaving the bottom end open and Ronnie Bouchard's gonna come around the high side. A slow car in front. Buddy Baker already having some issues. Right, side by side with uh, Bouchard here on the front stretch. Making up one spot there on Buddy Baker in that beautiful Crisco car. All clear. That's all right. Ronnie's going to slip in front. 81 as well, coming on the high side. Clear high. Just pinched a little bit towards the bottom. I don't want to clear myself here. There we go.
need to watch the lunge into turn three. It's the easiest way to get uh, to crash out. To not see somebody diving on you. My spotter is not exactly on top of things with somebody going for a move, so I got to kind of keep an eye on it myself. All right, fourth gear, a little bit of breathing room behind, thankfully. So 30th position here. Just let this whole pack in front of me sort out. Three wide up there with Yarborough in the middle, I can see. Randy LaJoy a bit slow coming out of turn one. Jump on the low side of him here. Gotta actually hold it in there on the high side. All clear. Outside. I got a great run coming out of turn three with the shifting. Hopefully we don't lose a gear at some point. That would be that would be tough around here. Just gonna hold in. I don't want to go three wide. It's a little bit too early for that. Outside. Middle there. Ah, oh, Bouchard really All slings way. it in there. Oh, that was the joy. He's gonna go for another spot as well on Bouchard. There we go. third gear right against that curbing on the inside these days that's just pavement it's a little bit easier yeah if we lost fourth gear it would definitely be a race over if we lose third it would be no more no more competitive speed pretty much five laps in then or we're on the fifth lap everybody's starting to get strung out it's gonna get really strung out here Pocono was labeled as a boring track by a lot of folks I think still is but it's because it's some hard, hard racing, and it gets strung out quite a bit, and uh, then becomes kind of a strategy race and things. I really love this track. That's why. That's why I wanted to do this one. Player high. Not being too aggressive yet. Just need to get this first run into us. Got a third gear here. Slide out wide a little bit. The 81 right on my bumper. Nice run through turn one there. It's a lot easier when you don't have to focus on the cars behind you as well, so it's good to have a little bit of a lead there. I got a little more torque in third gear as well, which helps the turn. There we go. Nice run here. Gonna have a little bit of speed on LaJoy. Throw it on the low side, side by side then. So we'll come down to turn number one. Alright, nice clean pass. Top 30 again. I do think, you know, as far as NASCAR 2003 and and tracks, it does do these types of tracks best. I think uh, it's with the AI, you know, they, they race the most like the real races around tracks like this. Short tracks are fun, but, you know, you have to be really close quarters and hitting hitting cars and stuff. It'd be a lot of accidents. Super speedways, the drafting, they just, they just don't make the type of moves that the real drivers would. But around a... 
a, uh, a long oval track like Michigan, Fontana, Pocono. I think they're at their best, and it's a lot of fun. We'll see how the race evolves. We've already seen one car go in the pits, Buddy Baker, on like the second lap with a, some sort of mechanical. I don't know if he's out of the race or not. We'll check. If we get a yellow flag, we'll check the standings. But a uh, long ways to go. We're not even 10 laps in. Just looking at my mirror, Bouchard there is tickling the rear bumper. So I can do the heel and toe down into the third turn which is, I think, the fastest way to do it because you get a little bit of that engine braking. But you can also just brake in and fourth gear, and then once the car gets slowed down, just do a normal downshift without the heel toe. And that uh, could be a little easier, especially if you're in a really long run. And you don't need every little bit of speed. All right, we got some side-by-side -side here in front of me. I'm not losing these guys, which is good. We'll have to see as the tires start to wear out, are they going to come to me or are they going to run away? Remember, we could stretch we could stretch this to like 40 laps on a tank of fuel, but I don't think the tires are going to last that long. Get it up the inside of Yarborough there. Run a bit wide. We got Bouchard around my bumper again. I got a little interesting there. big draft down this crazy front straightaway. It's so long. Just wait on that throttle. It's a test of patience there through the first corner. Kaylee Arbaro stuck up behind JD McDuffie. I'm going to get up to the inside of him. Side by side down into the tunnel turn. It's a bit early for this. My eye on LaJoy now behind me. See, once we get off the brake there, then I can do the downshift. That's a little easier to do. I don't think it's quite as quick, though. But it's, it's smoother and being consistent. I'm up to 28th. Being consistent is... Uh, what it's all about in this type of racing. All right, car is starting to push quite a bit. Yeah, the window is filling up with some rubber. I mean, I'm following these cars closely behind. It's going to happen. We'll get it cleaned up in the pit stop. All right, Kale went for a move there on McDuffie, and it's going to slow both of them down. So we'll come down to turn three. It's going to be interesting. Kale on the inside. Run it a bit hotter into the corner. Get it down into third gear. See if I can carry that outside line. Ooh, uh, door to door. <laughs> All clear. Just pedal the throttle a little bit there. Coming out. There we go. That was a fun pass. Around the outside. Looks like I can do that. So Good thing to have in the memory bank. Kale there. Sometimes you have to watch your mirror almost as much as you watch out the front of the car. All right, nice run on JD here, but gonna catch him right as we get to the tunnel turn. I'm gonna stay in line with him, see if I can get a run coming into turn three. It's a lot easier to pass down there. Yeah, Kale's, Kale's probably got pretty high aggression, so we'll see if, uh, see if he does anything crazy here.
Looks like I got to run on JD here on the short shoot here down to uh down to the tunnel corner. What? Leaders on pit road. Has to be somebody with an issue then. Hale slides up the inside there, caught me off guard a little bit. Has to be somebody with an issue if somebody's on pit road. Looks like Dale Earnhardt's in the pits. I saw his sign going down. Man, the pole sitter, the leader. Dale Earnhardt in the pits already. Yeah, I would think it's some sort of mechanical or something. Alright, I think this little group of cars in front is holding me up quite a bit. I just need to find a way around as we got the two Pierce or Parson brothers side by side. Dive it in under JD. That's a little, little aggressive, but we gotta make something happen here. Yeah, or a really weird strategy, but I don't think it's that. He's got a great run on Benny. Get around JD and Benny here down the front stretch. We got Phil Parsons in front. Hey, I could use some more of the the leaders to uh to DNF. It's, I think the only way I'm gonna be getting all the way up there today. Caution. All right, we got to race back to the flag. So some sort of yellow flag here pretty early on. So definitely we'll pit for tires and stuff under this yellow if everybody else does. A little bit hot there coming into turn three. Enough speed to carry on JD. There we go. All right. Well, yeah, racing back to the yellow is such a throwback. It's crazy they did that up until 2003, but to be honest, if you look back at the old races, there were definitely times where they raced each other, but a lot of times it was just everybody kind of slowed down and kept their position. And so it wasn't this hyper aggressive. And I think what happened, I mean, what ended up happening is that everything got so much more competitive that that was an advantage some teams could find. So everybody started racing really hard back to the flag in the early 2000s, late 90s, and it, uh, it became extra bad. The sport itself used to be a little more gentlemanly back in this time. All right, down to second gear. So we're definitely gonna pit. I think everybody's gonna be coming into the pits and uh, Crowded pit lane, just need to make sure we don't get damage. And find my pit stall as well. I have to imagine everybody's gonna pit. If nobody pits, I'm not gonna pit, but yeah, we're all coming in. All right, gonna try to find my pit stall, get in nice and smooth, don't hit anybody. Looking for the 95 board. Don't speed. There it is. I can see it up the up the way. Randy LaJoy is right behind me. Get down to first gear here. All right, in the box. Not a bad entry. I don't think I have any damage or anything, so we'll just uh, try to get a good exit then. Go go go! Go 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 go! go. All the way to the last line. Near road to be seventy. Bill on the inside here as everybody bunches up. I think I'm gonna lose a couple spots just just through all that. Alright, behind Buddy Arrington. We'll see where this sorts out. I was 25th coming in. I don't know if I lost spots or gained. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a few cars picked up some damage through that.
It's like a new lease on life with the clean, clean windshield now. Couple cars up there going into the pits. We can take a look at the standings. All right, so Daryl Waltrip is leading right now. Well, let's wait till we get across the line, but this will sort us sort our order out. Yeah, it makes sense. Daryl's up front. He started second. There we go. Somehow Dale Earnhardt's still in the top five. All right, so Daryl Waltrip from Harry Gant, Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt must have had like a puncture or something. The thing about Pocono is you can pit under green and not go a lap down if you uh if you if you're up front when you pit so he's he's still in the mix but he's definitely going to be well if you pit with everybody just now i guess we'd be on the same strategy i have no idea that's interesting joe rutman then in the 26 terry labani bobby allison bobby hillen and ken schrader the two miller cars are doing quite well up there if we come on back so i'm in 25th so i, I held my spot through that whole cycle if we come to the bottom here, looks like Joe Cranmer is uh, is a lap down. A Buddy Baker is almost a lap. I think he was maybe on the front there in front of the pace car. So nobody's out of the race yet, but Cranmer had some sort of accident or something. Interesting. All right. Hopefully we'll get the one to go next time. Yeah, getting in the pits and getting out is one of the hardest parts about this type of oval racing. This track's easy compared to a lot of them. If you if you if you can be good at it at like an Atlanta, that's a that's a real talent. get the one to go. It'll be one to go this time, but okay, here come your lap cars inside. All right, we do There's got double file restarts, here. which it's only means if you're a lapped car, you can come up the inside, which, right? here we go, two lapped it's cars. This is going to make go things go. really Four. sketchy. Line up behind the 67. Stay up high. I think is a uh, likely, likely reason for more cautions as the race progresses, but we'll see, see how it works out. So we did a good stint there. Of uh, We're going to start restart at lap 20. And we should be able to push it if we had to stretch it to lap 60. And everything felt good. I felt, I felt fast. Uh, hopefully I jumped a couple cars that I was stuck behind. I think Parsons, Phil Parsons in front. I think I was quicker than him. So we'll still have to get around him, but... See if we can make up at least a couple more spots. Just get through the restart. It's the first restart, so I just need to see how it all works. A couple of real slow cars up front. Well, Buddy Baker's probably not too slow, but I think the 48 is very slow, so we'll see how everybody copes with that. Down into second gear for the start. 182 laps to go. as high as I can in second before we really bog down in third, but everybody still gets a better jump. It's alright, got a nice little pocket here. Swing down to turn one, up to fourth gear. Let's see him three wide up front. Just watch for some fireworks here because of these lapped cars. Alright, onto the back stretch. Got the 81 
a little bit of steam coming behind me. Dive it on into turn three. I'm going to slide a bit wide. Pick up the throttle, though. Remember, I got cold tires. They're brand new. They feel a lot different than what I was just driving. Real slidey there. I think we've got this pack in the middle here where the slow cars are. fill then still too wide too file in front and we've got buddy baker on the outside two by two baker must be having a lot of issues because i don't think he's he's that slow typically oh, understeer a lot there the push all right parson's gonna get on the low side Well, gonna be stuck on the outside here. It's all right. In the third turn, we'll we'll do all right, I think. Oh, 81 slides up, kind of pinches me there. We got Michael Waltrip in that Hawaiian punch car in front. 81's gonna take my line. All right, this is the time I gotta play this cool. Still so early in the race, it'd be, it'd be a shame to get uh, into a wreck now. Sorry, right, we'll let these guys slide on by. There's Kale on the low side. 48's in front. This car's been holding everybody up. One of them. Slide in front of Kale here on the low side. Try to get Cranmer then. Kale's gonna try to put it in on the outside. Ugh. out of the pits in front. What is that? Oh, is that LaJoy? It is. There's no pit exit lane here, which is super sketchy. Looks like Randy LaJoy had an issue as well. Sneak around him down Long Pond Street. Hopefully get a, a long green flag run now that things have sorted out a little bit. Car feels feels good. I think I can pick off a lot of these guys one by one. I think uh, Buddy Baker's in the mix up there, but he's not really holding anybody up. You can still see the leaders, so I'm not super far, super far off. I, I would love to not go a lap down, obviously.
stacked up behind Benny Parsons here. Nice run coming out of turn three, right up next to him. All right, fourth gear. Should have him down into turn one. Hang it in there. They can get a lot of grip up there. I can't do that, what they're doing on the outside. I have to take the inside line. I don't know. We'll see. We'll adventure at some point. Sure, we're sure at some point I'll get bored enough to try it. All right. Back behind Phil. It's Phil and I. some speed out of turn three. Phil's looking down low as well. I had a run there, but I had to give it up. He's right on the 81. All right, we'll fall back in for now. At some point, I'm going to have to try making moves into the tunnel turn here, but we'll save it for the second half of the race. Oh, it's so slow coming into turn three. I'm going to really get on the brakes there, almost locking up the tires. All right, got a nice run coming out. Trying to get on the low side. It's just fender to fender there. Get up to fourth gear. Try to get this 81 as well. It's been kind of a thorn in my side so far. Really weight on the throttle there, but there we go. All clear. Side by side. Oh, went golfing. Thank you. <laughs> Never had somebody do that before. Well, welcome. You get some emojis if you're a member. I appreciate that. I get down to third gear here. So I got in front of Phil in that 81 car finally. And it uh, looks like we've got like two real packs of cars. We've got the leaders up there. I think it's the two Junior Johnson cars way out front. Uh, the second pack's kind of spread out, but I've got a big wad here. The rest of the top 20. I think Eddie Beerswall in front in the 64. I think that's Elmo Langley's car, if I'm not mistaken. Just need to make sure I don't miss any of my braking marks. It's, it's so hard to get the car slowed down if you're a little bit late. Up to 24th though, new, new highest position in the race. late arc into the corner got nobody behind me now so it's falling into a little bit of a hole here I want to see if I can catch back up to these guys really throw it into turn three use a lot of the tire there one sixty one two lap.
It's like Michael Waltrip going for a move on the low side. It's a bit late on the brakes there. I don't need to do stuff like that. I'm pulling in these guys just inch by inch. But they're going to be really hard to pass because we're at nearly the same speed. I'm not sure what the most successful engine is in NASCAR. I mean, these days it's... I don't know. I actually have no idea. I don't know why I went down to third gear in turn one. Not done that yet. Well, it actually hooked really nice. Maybe something to keep in mind. A lot more shifting, though. To do it twice on the track. I thought Dale Jr. had that big crash in 2002 at some point with Steve Park. Yeah, I don't know. I might use third gear here in turn one at some point just to uh, maybe once, once we really slow down because of the tires. All right, up to the 64 now. I'm going to catch him right before the short shoot with a tunnel turn. I don't know why I call it the short shoot. All right, right on these guys. I got a bit of a run coming on the front stretch. Swinging up the inside, but they're going to have a slipstream, and I'm not. more side by side than that to make it work. Starting to push quite a lot right to the wall there. Slide up behind Buddy Baker. Baker in front, I think he's a lap down. Came into the pits earlier for some reason. That was a weird entry. <laughs> it a turn two. I wasn't really thinking of making a move there, but 64 slowed down. Still there. All clear. All right, we'll get around him, though. Pick him off one by one. All right, up to 23rd. The 18 is the car in front of me, so it's... Yeah, Buddy Baker here is a lap down. Can't remember who drives the 18 car. They're doing quite well whoever they are. Still very early in the race, so just need to keep that in mind. It's easy to lose track of where you actually are. Yeah, Grand Prix Legends was the first of the Papyrus games. It's actually the second. So Soda Off-Road Racing was, I believe, the first Papyrus game that used the, the basics of what became this racing engine. But then Grand Prix Legends was really the, the big first one. And then uh, they used it in NASCAR 4 was the first of the NASCAR games to use it. I made a video about that a little while back looking at NASCAR 4 and talked a bit about the history of the NASCAR Sims. But uh, NASCAR 2003 here was the last of their games to use this, and then it, it did become iRacing. I, I doubt there's a lot of code left over from, from these days. But you can see a lot of the similarities in it. I mean, especially if you use the default, like, F keys and all of that. They've kept the same general idea, but I'm sure a lot of, of what they're doing under the hood has drastically changed over the years.
This is it. This is, in my opinion, this is NASCAR. It's just these slugs, long endurance races where you're just trying to get inches out of your car, lap after lap after lap. We've got such a long way to go in this. And uh, there's so many more things to happen. Who knows when a yellow flag is going to come out. But right now we're just concentrating on strategy or making the most of each of our laps. And then if we can figure out the right strategy as the race progresses. We went green again on lap 20. So we should make it... We could push to lap 60. I don't think everybody's going to go that far, though. I can already feel the tires starting to give up a bit. I'm turning... Uh, 159 was my last lap. We'll see what this one is, but already down a couple miles an hour on the lap. Yeah, it was a 159 as well. And I'm pushing just as hard as I was earlier, so it's just the car is giving up some speed. Seems like everybody's tires are burning relatively the same as me, which is a miracle in NASCAR 2003. I often find that the AI will either be way slower at the end of a run or way faster than you. Right on the back of Baker here. Yeah, I haven't tried any of the... I know there's been some people modding or figuring out how to do some of those things like stage racing and double file restarts and stuff. But to be honest, when I'm doing my NASCAR 2003 stuff, it's usually this type of racing, which the rules are already right for it. I'm gaining on Baker here down the front stretch. I don't know if I should... Try a pass into turn one. It's a bit late on it. He's going to leave the door open, though. No, he shuts it. Oh, that was close. Kind of hesitated, both of us. Outside. We'll get up the inside of him down Long Pond Straight, though. Let's see if we can make this move. I haven't really tried to move through the tunnel yet. slide in front of him. Bit of a slide job there. He could hear the tires just a little bit. Tired the third gear for turn three. Ran it a bit hot there, but pick up the throttles. Try to carry that speed. It'll help you down the whole front stretch. You really want a lot of speed coming out of turn three. Alright, 18 car in front. This is who I'm battling now. real quick for Baker. Hopefully he slides on back. Not really a factor at this point. Oh, slow car on the inside. Who's that? It's like Terry Labonte, the blown engine. See if they bring out the yellow for it, but he might make it back to the pits. That's definitely race over for Terry. It's going to give me another spot. I'm getting close to that top 20. Yeah, 22nd now. So two more spots. The two in front of me, Michael Waltrip in this 18 car. That would get me my top 20. Tommy Ellis, all right, thanks. Yeah, so Tommy Ellis in front. Ellis is gonna go for a move on Waltrip here. I like that Hawaiian punch car, it's cool. It fits Michael Waltrip, doesn't it? All right, Ellis is gonna be a bit slow here on the low side, being pinched down from Waltrip. I'll get a bit of a run. 
See if we can bump draft wall trip here down on Pond Straight. Might actually clear Ellis before the tunnel turn. Clear low, buddy. Outside. Whoa. <laughs> He's gonna actually pass me back. It's such a slow entry there. Man, I can't see anything now. Windshield is covered in rubber. Might be some of the oil and stuff from Still Terry Labonte's blow up. All clear. Still have maybe another 15 or so laps before pits, so. Made up a couple spots there. We're fighting now for that 20th position. He's so slow into the tunnel turn. There's a little bit of time here, but might still be able to get the dive bomb. Too far back. All right, we're trying to get a run on Mikey down the front stretch. There we go, up the inside. All right, clear Mikey before turn one. Let's just try to get a little bit of a gap. Got Buddy Arrington in front now. Understeering a lot there, or pushing the car. Yeah, these cars, I don't think uh, NASCAR stock cars ever ran with fuel gauges back in these days. They just had fuel pressure. So you'll see it, you'll see it start to drop once we get to a low tank. And around here, once it starts to drop, you're really only going to have two laps at the most to get into the pits. So. That's how you know you're really towards the end. I mean, if you think about it, you're not really working off of a gauge in a car like this. You just know how much fuel you burn. You, know, you put 20 gallons in for practice. You go out, do 10 laps, and then they empty the fuel tank and measure how much fuel's in there. And then you know roughly how much you burn to do 10 laps, and they'll calculate all your strategy off of that. So you, uh, you don't really need a gauge so much, but obviously these days they have that kind of stuff. All right, it is a dirty windshield that I've got right now. We'll see if we get all the way to green flag pit stops. So far, so good with the race, though. I'm happy how it's working out thus far. A little bit wide here through the tunnel turn and missed the corner. I think that black pavement actually has a little bit more grip, so I'm gonna make sure I catch that. Catch up to Buddy Arrington here. I I think I'm actually quicker than him as well. Go pick up the throttle. The car gets pretty low in RPM there, but. Catch right up to Buddy here as we get to the tunnel turn. Man, he's so slow. I'm really gonna have to watch that because entering tunnel turn, they're breaking quite early. And uh, I just don't want to rear end somebody. We've got Mikey coming up behind me again. That really slowed me down. Ooh, oh, dive bomb on, Buddy. No, no, no. Don't hit the wall. Oh, I hit it. <laughs> All right, try to get back to the line. Dang. I shouldn't have gone for that move. It was a bit late. Ah, oh, we'll have to see what kind of damage I have. I just, I wasn't patient enough. We're still in the first quarter. Why did I do that? Ugh. Alright, the car is still rolling. I think I'm gonna have some aero damage, most likely. But yeah, I, I just, that was a little bit too late of a dive bomb on Buddy there, and he closed the door, and uh, 
I tried to keep it out of the wall. Just wasn't able to, and I hit the front, which is the worst part to hit. But we'll see here. Hopefully, hopefully I don't overheat the car now or anything. Alright, we're under yellow. Just gotta catch up to the field. Oh yeah, I mean, it was one of those, ooh, the car's understeering a lot. Just add more damage to it. Up to the field here, we'll pit with everybody, and I uh, expect to lose most of the positions because we're gonna fix the damage. So, I mean, I can't see the hood, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. It wasn't the hardest hit, but it was a pretty decent hit. Fine, you will, you will, uh, if you do watch back any of these races from '86. Tim Richmond won the second race of the year here after getting in a crazy accident. He got T-boned hard and the whole door was crushed in and he still won the race. So, never say never. Now you can see my skid marks here. I thought I was going to be able to keep it going into the grass, which would have been ideal, but uh, it looped on me. All right, we'll get into the pits. The road will be open this time. Alright, don't need to do anything crazy here on the pit entry. Yeah. I'm gonna be the last one out of the pits anyway. There's my crew. Ah, that's so disappointing. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens, because... We'll fix the damage. You can hear the guys with the hammers. I should stay on the lead lap, I would think. As long as the damage isn't too crazy. And, uh... Go, go, go. Oh, man, go, that was go, actually go, quick. Go. All the way to the last line. The pace car is down ball pond. Your road to be 70. 50 miles <laughs> what, what did the spotter just say? The pace car is on long pond? I didn't know that was coded in. Line up behind the 70. All right. I am last. At least out of the uh, the cars that are are running right now on the lead lap, but oh my gosh, RJ, it's it's not a good joke. I don't know why you keep saying it. I use uh, for steering rotation. I use 400 degrees for NASCAR 2003, and I think for this setup, I've got a 26 to one steering ratio. So that, that makes it feel pretty good in my mind. It's not too quick, but it's not super slow either. Yeah, they definitely did some tape and then uh, threw me back out. We'll see. I mean, that being that quick to fix the damage leads me to believe it's not that bad. So we'll have to see. But not ideal there. Ugh. Skid marks are going to be there for a while too. This, the restart's going to be kind of wild because we've got lapped cars now, quite a few of them. And uh, they're going to make it interesting up front. We'll take a look at the running order as it stands. So Daryl's still leading the way from Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt's in third. Dale, wow, for, for having an issue early, he's I think he's back on the right strategy and everything. So he's uh, He's recovered long tire or something in the first stint, but Harry Gant and then Richard Petty up in fifth. Bobby Hillens in sixth, Joe Rutten, Dave Marcus, uh, Rusty Wallace, and Neil Bonnet. I don't know where Bobby Allison is. He was up front for a while. He's back in 19th now. And I was fighting for that top 20, and I'm going to have to do all of that over again. My God. Down in 29th now. Out of Jody Ridley in the 75, and Pancho Carter, and DK Ulrich. Those are the last cars on the lead lap. So I'm not last on the lead lap. If we look down, though, we've got a string of lapped cars now. Buddy Baker, Randy LaJoy, Eli Gerhardt, Buddy Boys, Cranmer, and Newsom. And then Terry Labonte is the only car out of the race so far. With, uh, with an ignition issue. We saw him smoking down the, the little short straight here earlier on, so... 
not too bad for being quarter distance. Quarter distance and being uh, only one car out of the race so far. So, plenty of time for more activities. I haven't adjusted the car at all yet. I mean, it, it feels pretty good to be honest. I feel pretty competitive, but the car's not doing anything that I wouldn't want it to do. See if we get the one to go this time. It'll be one to go this time by all right, here come all these guys. <laughs> Buddy Boys is a pretty funny name. It also is spelled with an I-E, which makes it even funnier, I feel like. But he, he was a Canadian driver, which there were not a lot of Canadian NASCAR drivers. He didn't do many races, though, but you can see him. He's up there in the inside in the white 24 car. All right, we're stuck up behind J.D. McDuffie here. 150 to go. Last yellow was my mistake. Got to feel out the. Uh, Got to feel out the car this time. I don't know. I don't know if I'll have much damage or anything. Yeah, Buddy Boys is Trevor Boys' father, and and uh, Buddy Boys was in this race, so. slows down for the tunnel turn here. I'm interested to see if, if this restart goes all right with the uh, the AI all packed up up front with the, with the slow cars. We'll see. It might get really sketchy. I don't think we have anybody that's extremely slow yet. Yeah, there's been a few Canadian NASCAR drivers here and there, but there, there really hasn't been many, which is super surprising because Canada has a lot of oval racing, short track stuff too, especially back in this time. There just hasn't been, you know, I would expect three or four coming to always to be in the coming Cup coming Series, but it's just not oh, no, not many. All right, here we go. Take the cars off. Be ready. Be ready. Green, green, green. All right, it's a little slow on the start there. I think that's me, though. Fourth gear for turn one. New tires. I don't remember that. The car doesn't slide as much. <laughs> See DK there looking up the inside. Slided into turn three there. Had to catch the car. Got Jetty Ridley's all over my rear bumper. All right. I don't feel I don't feel quite as fast as I was, but that could just be how I'm driving it. Let's see, everybody's packed up here because there's some slow cars. We're all trying to work around. So one of my biggest gripes with NASCAR 2003 is that lapped cars don't get out of the way. There's no blue flags in NASCAR, but if you're a lapped car, you just kind of stay to the low side and let everybody pass you. Oh, crash. Just evade, evade. Oh, that's Buddy Boys. Just running through the grass here, slide back up onto the track. <laughs> just totally dove out of the way. It's a buddy boys spinning there. Let's see if I can pick up a couple free spots here. All right. Made it. Up to 26 then. Just went straight for the grass. In real life, you'd have to be careful because the grass, I'm sure, is not smooth. <laughs> but we can take avoiding action. All 
I, I had a feeling that was going to turn into a crash. I'm a little worried there's going to be, like, a lot of wrecks now because of these slow cars. We'll have to see. I maybe should have not done double file restarts. I know. Commentator's curse. I talked about Buddy Boys and he wrecks. Tough to say what happened there. We'll take a very quick look. I don't want to delay too much because it's already a very long race. But we'll go back. And then we'll find Buddy Boys here and see what happened to old Buddy. He was very much packed up. We'll have to see how it started. It started down after the tunnel turn. It goes running through. It's gonna run a bit wide into Bobby Bobby Allison just ran straight in the wall there. Oh big pile up, you can see him all the way I'm off the screen on the right. Let's slide on by there you go. Alright. Oh no. I don't have a pause key. This is one of the issues with the short keyboards. How do I do the pause? I forget. What is this thing? I think it's this. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> That's the funniest issue to have. I have this mini keyboard, but it doesn't actually have a pause key. Oh, everybody's going to pit? I guess I got to, right? Everybody else is going to. Yeah, the mini keyboards, they don't have a, an actual pause key, so I don't know how to <laughs> unpause it. But I got it. We're good. The road will be open this time. Right, we'll come down pit lane. It's just always a risk of getting in an accident here on pit lane because people slow down and stuff. Oh, I got rear-ended there a little bit. We'll do four tires and fuel, though. Uh, for this keyboard, I think it's going to be different for every keyboard, but I can press function and, and the B key, like uh, Bravo, and it... And it lets me unpause. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. It's like a fake pause key. The guy was pretty slow. <laughs> he does say long pond. Yeah, that was Bobby Allison. That uh, or no, sorry, who's in the Neil Bonnet? Sorry, that's right, Neil Bonnet's in the 12. I should have maybe taken the track position. But, yeah, that was a good point. I maybe could have stayed. Because we had just pit. What did we do? Three laps? <laughs> right. The boss key. I actually meant to this morning bind it to my button box so that I wouldn't have that issue. But I forgot. Okay, things could be going better, but they could be going a lot worse at the moment. Had a uh, sequence of yellows now, it's really gonna... We gotta get a green flag run going, or this is gonna be the longest... Longest race of all time. But, I made a mistake. We had a really good green flag run going, at least around 30 laps, I think. Not too far off from taking some green flag pit stops, and I lunged, I took a... a low move on Buddy Arrington into turn three here, and uh... I was a bit late on it, so he turned in like he was supposed to, and spun out. I hit the wall. Not super hard. I mean, hard. In real life, that would have been a really bad hit. For NASCAR 2003, I, uh, I didn't do too bad. I didn't damage the car too badly. And then we went green again there, and then there was a big pile up in front. We got a lot of slower lapped cars now, and I'm, I'm a little bit worried about them on these restarts. We'll have to see how it plays out. If we can get through, like, five or six laps, I think it'll sort itself out enough that it won't be too much of an issue, but... Yeah, that was Neil. I, I mixed up the, uh... the red 
beer sponsored cars. But yeah. Bobby Allison's with the uh, Miller car, a little bit up the ways there. I'm in 28th position now, so through the pit stops, I lost a few more spots. But we're still on the lead lap. I think the car is still fast. And we have a long ways to go, so plenty of drama to unfold. But it looks, <laughs> it looks like Dale Earnhardt's back in the lead. We, we saw Dale Earnhardt early in the race come into the pits during green... Maybe a blown tire or something, but he fixed that. Was able to stay in the lead lap, and then because of the yellows, has uh, caught back up. We had one yellow really early on, but I don't think I looked at what it was for, so... Might have been Joe Cranmer, because he went a lap down. It's fun, though. I love... This is what's fun about this type of AI racing, is that you can have a whole race happen whenever you want it to. And uh, this sim does a great job at... Uh, Simulating a real, you know, NASCAR race. You really put yourself in there. It'll be one all right. Go this time by. Okay, here come all the slow guys the again. There's gonna be a lot of chaos up front here, so just be ready. Right, buddy. Oh, looks like Buddy up, Boys is still in the race there. The he's got no rear bumper anymore, but he's still here. The yeah, I'm racing for, if you missed the very beginning, we're uh, entered, entered with the Sadler brothers for this race, who have been racing Davey Allison in some select races, so it's a good team, but it's uh, independent. Definitely a... Uh, lower funded effort and it's been difficult I was just flirting with the top 20 when when I made that mistake so be interesting to see if I can get back up there we've got plenty of laps to do it hopefully we can get a good green flag run here Appreciate everybody coming along. It's been a good little little crowd coming in here. This is something totally different. I don't know if I'm going to start doing a lot of these or not, but I thought it would be fun today with the race later today happening here to uh, do a fun, fun virtual throwback race. So hopefully enjoyable so far. through turn three and down into second gear for the coming start. To the green, buddy. To the green. Go get Cross your fingers we can make it through this one. I'll get down into third. Third gear is really tall because we use it in turn three, sometimes turn one. Get up to fourth gear. All right. Nice and easy then. You can see some of these cars are very slow now. Alright, got around the 17. Some cars with damage now, they're gonna be big roadblocks. Really slide it through the tunnel turn there. It's all green so far. Yeah, I added the little 43 banner to the uh, motorhome to replace the Jeff Gordon one. It felt a little more appropriate. Car slide around the outside. I actually don't even know who that is. Two, three wide. I think we're going to pass the, uh, the little pack there, though. That's some of the really slow lapped cars. Down into turn one underneath Cale Yarborough. There we go. Clear him as well. Decent start. I think things have sorted out well enough now. But some of those slow cards, we're going to start seeing them a lot. It's going to make things interesting as we get further in. Bobby Wallach's car on the outside. Richard Petty being held up. Feather the throttle a little bit coming down into turn three. 
Just hug that white line. Three wide, petty. <laughs> Old Richard there getting racy. He's going to dive up the inside of JD. JD's going to get held up on the outside here. We got Cranmer in the 48. It's a little bit of a roadblock with Newsom as well. Let's see if we can get Rick here in, in the tunnel turn. Cranmer as well. That's James Hilton's car. He raced forever in NASCAR and then ARCA for years and years and years. It's a fourth gear. Ron Bouchard on the outside. From my neck of the woods, Ronnie. Push. Bobby Gerhardt, I think it's my first time seeing him in this race, the 85 there. All clear. A little bit a little bit sideways. Luckily I was clear on the outside there. Pretty sure it's gonna have a bit of a run coming down to turn three. Run it deep. Yeah, the curbs around here I mean they're they're angled a bit so they do you have to be careful about that but they have plenty of grip so you can really use the uh, use it all right 21st right back to where I was before all that craziness it's a pretty decent restart actually car feels fine so we really lucked out I was surprised that that crash didn't hurt me more but I will take it Breath of the throttle there, make sure I don't clobber the wall. Got a third gear. Nice run on Ridley here. Pinch him up. Just come down to turn one. Just want to make the corner as wide as I can. Speed. You can make pretty good time just carrying speed. Try not to pinch the car off too much. Right down to that curb. More like a white line than a curb. At least in, in this version of it. Alright, I think I'm going to be in 20th. Top 20. <laughs> Top 20. Taking 64 laps, but was my original goal is to finish in this top 20 so now I just gotta do the next 137 without falling out of it I'm happy we got through that restart I was a little worried with the lapped cars up front that I was just gonna turn into a wreck fest and uh, that would be no good so hopefully it stays green here for a while we can get a lot of these laps underway we should be fine on fuel for for uh, getting over halfway how many of these guys we can pick off. I think I've been passing Phil Parsons, I feel like, every run. <laughs> He's back in front of me. Could have maybe gone for it there. 
would have been hard to get more than just in his rear wheel there. I never really considered that people from Maine would call themselves maniacs, but I guess that is a thing. I've never heard that in my all my time up here in New England, but I guess that makes sense. All right, decent run coming out of turn three, and I've got Morgan Shepard closing in behind me, so i got to make some moves here, get up the inside here, Phil Parsons. Stick it in there on the outside. I had to choke the throttle a little bit, not run wide. Side by side, door to door. Got Morgan Shepard pushing me from behind. Player high. All right, able to successfully lunge it in. Good run here on the Eddie Bierschwald car, 64. I don't really like passing in turn one. I, I really have to slow down so much to keep it tight on the inside. Actually, it was a good. That's a good question, Blue Flags. There, that. Uh, I mean, I know they had spotters, but I don't know if they were quite the same as as this. I was thinking about that as. I was setting this up. Outside. A little bit sketchy here with Morgan Shepard's trying his best. He's quick. You can see the difference between the slower and the quick cars because he's relentless behind me. Player high. Right, we'll lunge it in. I don't know if we'll be able to keep these guys behind me though. We've got Neil Bonnet as well recovering from that crash. Yeah, I know they had they definitely had spotters. Those were in the 70s, the team started having spotters. Basically, as soon as radio technology improved to the point. But I don't know if they really did the, the same kind of calls that they do these days, or it's just constant talking. I know I've read stories about some of the drivers like telling them to let me drive. You know, I can see, I can see him. I don't need you telling me. All that type of stuff. They were a bit more... I mean, if you did it for years and years without somebody telling you that cars were next to you, you would probably hate that somebody was telling you. I'm trying to run away from Bonnet behind though, but he's going to be very quick here. He was up in the top 10 or so, so just got caught up in that accident. Here comes Morgan Shepard. Yeah, I know the early days of spotters, were, it was a lot more just obviously being able to talk to the driver to tell him to pit or not. So you didn't have to have a pit board. So I can't imagine using a pit board at a lot of the NASCAR tracks. I mean, around this track would we'll probably work all right because of the front stretch pit wall, but but it was a lot more just talking about strategy or if there's a crash, telling you that there's a crash in turn one, you know, and what it is and maybe maybe where to go to get around it. But the like side by side, car low, car high stuff, I don't know when that actually started. I'm sure some drivers in 86 were doing that, but I don't think everybody was. Yeah, the car honestly feels great. The, that's the problem is 
if it was doing something, if anything it's understeering or uh, pushing, people get so mad when I use understeer and talk about NASCAR, but it's pushing a little bit, which makes it safer to drive so that I'm not hanging the rear end out and uh, wearing out the tires and spinning, but otherwise it's pretty good, which means I don't really know how to make it faster. But I'm up into 18th, which is exceeding my goal at the moment. And I do think I'm reeling in this pack in front ever so slightly, but Morgan Shepard behind me is going to uh, try to pass me. I mean, if you go back into the 60s, 50s and 60s, when they'd come into the pits at like Daytona, the pit stops were long enough that the driver would actually hop out of the car and uh, talk to the crew chief in the pits. And when you had a 70 second pit stop, you could do that. You also didn't wear seatbelts, so you know, <laughs> it was pretty easy to just jump out. It's not, it's not pulling when it's oversteer, it's loose. <laughs> loose and tight push. Those are all the NASCAR terms. NASCAR 2003 is pretty unforgivable with its with a car being loose. And so it's I always try to err towards a, a pushing car and understeering a tight car just to uh, make it less likely for me to lose the rear end. But like when I when I made contact with Buddy earlier and spun in turn three, when I hit him, my car got loose, and then it, there was just no saving it. Really launched it into turn three there. Definitely closing in. We got Bobby Allison in front. I'm holding off these two behind. Neil Bonnet and Morgan Shepard are racing each other now, so I might have a little time here to scoot away from them. That's a good point when back in these days, don't need to downshift there. Back in these days, the seats, I mean, that you really had no, you had a very basic headrest, kind of like my sim seat here has. So you could easily turn your head left and right and see cars. You know, as soon as I started adding in the, the cradles for your head, which are a lot safer, then you couldn't really turn your head to see the car next to you. And so you needed a spotter a lot more. So it's probably a, a pretty plausible timing. Hey Ian, we're alive right now. For those that are, are jumping in a bit late, it's been a pretty, pretty dramatic first half of the race. It's been decent. I mean, I'm in 18th now. I started 30th. And uh, my goal is to finish in the top 20. So things are working out, but I've been in the wall once already. And luckily didn't pick up too much damage, if, if any, because we heard the crew hammer some stuff out, but the car's been fine otherwise. And I'm gaining on Bobby Allison here. A whole pack of cars stuck up behind Richard Petty. I've had quite a few different yellows as Bobby's going to sneak to the outside. That was very nearly what I did with Buddy earlier. I think Allison's actually got a little damage. You can see his hood popped up a little bit. All right, sneak up the inside of him. Probably wouldn't like that move. Buddy Baker in front. He's been a lap down all day. Went a lap down pretty early on. Went into the pits, maybe lap three or four. And uh, it's not slow, but he had some sort of issue that put him a lap down. Just the way it goes sometimes. Outside. He's going to be the inside, I hope. Yeah, I don't know where I got this dashboard for this mod from, but it's beautiful. 
and it has that patient sticker on it. Such a like classic NASCAR looking dashboard. It was up to me how much horsepower would modern would the modern cup cars have. I have no idea. I know it sounds nice on paper to have more horsepower, but I think it's a more complex problem than that. I think, uh, I don't like, I like the racing without downforce a lot more. So I would look at the downforce levels and maybe see what can happen with those. All right, I'm behind Buddy. Last time I tried to pass Buddy, things went really bad. He's got Morgan Shepard now. He's going to take a look at me. I don't know if I need to be blocking this early in the race. We still got a long way to go. But he leaves that door open on the inside. It's so inviting. All right, nice run out of turn three. Shift it up into fourth gear. Drag race down the front stretch towards turn one. Up the inside of Buddy. Buddy versus Buddy. There we go. Got Tommy Ellis now. Passed him a bit earlier in the race. We've got Randy LaJoy in front of him. Randy's been a lap down as well. Very slow, actually. Outside. Still there. Just get a little throttle in. Loosen her up. Caution. A lot of yellows. Alright, we've taken the yellow flags. We're just going to get around and catch up to the pack. up behind somebody in front. It looks like Tim Richmond, actually. Yeah, I got a bit loose on turn three, but I did it myself. I, I punched the throttle, which kind of broke the car loose, which, uh... I think is actually, uh... Felt good, actually, to be able to do that. So Richmond is quite slow in front of me here. A lot of cars in the pits. I think we had a crash. <laughs> As we catch up, I'll, I'll take a quick peek at what happened. Alright, it's put me in 16th though. I'm like slowly getting towards the front. I guess we're going to have to pit, because it's been quite a long ways on tires and stuff this time. They do, cl they do clean the windscreen, thankfully. It gets awful dirty, doesn't it? Alright, we will watch the replay real quick. See what happened. I have a feeling it was Richmond. We'll see here. See what happened to Tim. I don't know if it was him. He was just very slow. Still green flag out. All right, what's going on? Let's see if we can find find who was crashing or something. A lot of skid marks on the track. I don't see anybody having an issue. So I have no idea, maybe a debris caution. It could have been. Could have been a debris caution. All right.
All right, we're going to come into the pits this time and just get four tires and full fuel and we'll do the rest from there. Okay, road will be open this time. Okay, road will be <laughs> it's a stage caution, right? All right, watch for my pit stall. We've got a lot of cars just stopped in the pit lane now. Next time, you know, oh, I didn't get close okay. enough to get the left sides. All right, I'm too close to the wall. I can't change the left sides. That's going to hurt me a lot. I'm going to be up front, though. <laughs> Ooh, there comes Bodine. Here comes everybody out of the pits. I'm going to be second. Um, well, this is going to be really interesting. So I have old left side tires. I'm wondering if I should pit again just to uh, just to change the left sides. It's so early in the race, and I have. A, I guess we'll take the track position and see what happens. That was a big mistake, though. I just slid into the box a little too close to the wall, and the the crew couldn't couldn't get to uh, to the left side of the car. Rookie error, but it's put me way up front. But I have a feeling it's going to uh, really hurt my pace. Let's see here. Left sides are pretty worn out. <laughs> I don't know. Should I pit? It's early in the race, so if the tires are just terrible, you know, we can uh, we can always figure it out later. It might be a good experiment for later in the race. I'm going to change that back to four, just in case we green flag pit later. Yeah, there might be another yellow pretty quickly anyway. If that happens, then I've just got a bunch of free uh, free, free tires. Free, t free positions. The strategy, the, uh, the unexpected strategy call. Yeah, in real life they didn't have a pit road speed, and you could do that in NASCAR 2003, but the AI, you can already see that they're getting into some accidents and stuff on the pits, so. So I set it to 70, which seems to be the fastest you can go without there being utter chaos. And uh, better, than, better than it being like 40. Yeah, some strategy for later in the race, I guess. You can finally see the, the pace car in front. We'll say we did it intentionally. It's an intentional two-tire two, uh, two stop. The main thing I'm worried about is if we do get a green flag run, and it, and it stays green for a while, to the point where I wear the tires out to the... <laughs> So that they're uh, they're gonna blow. That would be the the main concern. They look pretty worn, the left front especially. Just some strategery, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, but as long as I stay ahead of sixteenth, I've gained. Alright, we should get the one to go this time. Yeah, it's a good question. It'll be go. one, one to go. go this time, but okay, here come your lap car this side. There's gonna be a lot of chaos up front here, so just be ready. It's gonna be a lot right, of buddy, chaos. Get the tug for me, alright? <laughs> it's a beat that bad boy. Let's go rock and roll, that work. Line up behind the Yeah, so how far can we go on a set of tires? Well, that is the question. Uh, I think it would have been a stretch to make it the full fuel run. So 40 laps would be the full fuel run. And I haven't, in my testing, I've never gone that far on a green flag. So I don't know if it would uh, be possible to do. 
it feels like the tires really start wearing out around 30 laps. And I can't remember the last time we pit before this. What do I have? 15 on the tires? So I think I've got another 15 laps at least on them. So we'll just have to see how, uh, how far we can go, how fast I am. Hope I can get around. So we got Buddy Boys there in the 24 on the inside. And he should be pretty slow. So as long as we can clear the slow traffic into turn one, I'll just see, uh, see where that puts me. <laughs> this is going to be a tense restart, I think. I have to watch for faster cars in the mirror. Yeah, it's a really nice track. It's from Thunder 98. And it's uh, it's like an early 90s Pocono, so it's a, it doesn't have the, the red and white walls, but otherwise it's spot on. It has the bigger grandstand, too. Yeah, it's like a late 80s pace car. This is the 88 the mod. Alright, down to second gear. Give Earnhardt a little shove off the line. Uh, he got it quicker than me. Oh, boys is quite quick there. This is gonna get interesting. Oh, I hit him. That did not go like I thought it was gonna go. Slid up into the third lane. All right, hold on. Just nice and gentle. Don't hit the wall. These guys in front, three wide. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just rookie mistakes happening. Oh, sliding real wide in the tunnel turn. I don't have a lot of grips. Oh, a little bit of contact in front. Not a lot of places to go. third gear. Alright, this didn't work out. I just had no speed on the acceleration. He's going to slow me up a lot here coming out of turn four, or turn three. <laughs> that did not go well. I'm 15th. I'm still better than I was. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't get taken out there. That was so crazy. Oh, and the tires are, are sliding already. I mean, I'm not going to pit under green. We're just going to ride this out. We kind of need a caution at some point, though. I don't know. Let's see. When it gets spread out a little bit, we'll see. We'll see what's happening. I'm not losing the guys in front now. I mean, I was stuck on the outside, so it's, uh, it's hard to keep speed up there. Not last. You're right, Ascari. Thank you. It's always good to remind yourself. And I've got Morgan Shepard right behind me. It's just like I was before the pit stops. I just have terrible tires now. Now we know, though, four is gold. We need we need four tires. Unless there's, like, no laps left. But even then... Clear, uh... Clear the 48. Ah, what fun would it have been to pit and then start at the back? I've done that already. It's good good to experiment here early in the race. I'm just surprised I, I didn't get taken out there. That was... <laughs> I'm honestly doing all right now. Let's see if I can pass a couple guys back. Earnhardt's got a heck of a lead out there. We got Buddy Baker on the outside. He's a lap down. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, I cannot make that work anymore. Here comes uh, Neil Bonnet. He's going to get me into the tunnel turn here. There's no grip on the outside. Ricky Rudd as well, coming down to turn three. All right, this is the part of the race where I head backwards, I think. It's 
It's alright, just hang in there. There's a long ways to go. We'll figure this out. Yeah, this is one of the best mods, I think, for NASCAR 2003, and it is one of the first mods that ever came out. Yeah, luckily, I mean, the right side tires are the more important tires on an oval, for sure. But, I mean, the left sides, you can see I was having trouble, like, really using that inside line to get around Buddy Baker. And uh, I think that's where it's going to hurt me, as we got Arrington coming up behind me as well. late on the downshift there. He's gonna stick it in, see? I just can't quite carry the mid-corner speed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not hopeless here, but... I'm just gonna hang on as long as we can on these tires and uh, see what happens. With my luck, this will be when we get the long green flag run. <laughs> Of a scrape there, we're all right. Using every inch of the track. Shepard's gonna keep Barrington busy behind me, I hope. Wow, I just couldn't stick that at all. Car washed up. Here comes Arrington again. Arrington's quick. He's just waiting for me to slip up, but he might have the line here coming down to the tunnel turn. Just have Shepard on the outside of him. That's right, I'll take the line away. Oh, I just can't stick it at all. You hear, hear the car slide there mid-corner. Got a terrible run into the short shoot, but so, so did he. Down into turn three. Really loose there. Almost lost the rear. Side by side. All right, Arrington's gonna find his way around here. Cause there's no way, <laughs> no way I'm holding the speed on the outside of turn one. We'll run a little bit too high there. Gonna get passed by a whole group. Pretty trained. Bouchard slide in front. All right, let's just try to get a, some runs going because I got to be careful. I'm I'm worried now that we didn't get a yellow immediately. I'm, I'm worried about how long this run's going to be, and uh, that these tires on the left side are actually going to wear and potentially blow, which would not be good. We got a couple cars in the pit lane. Yeah, I've got the H pattern set up. So it makes it makes downshifting really fun. <laughs> That's why I, one of the reasons I love this track. It's just a little bit more than your typical oval. This race is a lot more like just a fast left-hand road course. It's a lot of fun. All right, got more cars coming up behind me. comes up, uh, Eddie Beerschwalm. Just worried I'm gonna get turned here in three. It's always sketchy when they're coming up the inside. I don't think I missed time the restart, it just I think they just got a lot of a lot of power out front there. Pretty much did what I've been doing every time. It's a long we've got a long gap between second and third and I maybe could gear second a bit better. Or maybe set up first is my restart gear. I don't know. We don't really need first at all. So I don't even really use first in the pits. Ugh. I'm 
Now I know, though, taking two tires to start up in second is not going to win me the race. I couldn't even get around the lapped cars before turn one. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Yeah. I'm in 20th right now. I'm still meeting my goal. I mean, the only way I'm staying out, I think, from here forward is if everybody else was to stay out. And even then, new tires seem so much better. If I'm not battling for the win, it might actually be better to take tires and pass back a few cars, depending on how many cars are on the lead lap as well. Catch you back up to Bouchard here. I'm going to catch him right as we get to the tunnel turn. Let's me in on the inside there. Still there. Ooh, tight stuff. Yeah, I think a top 15 could happen too. And I mean, if we get more DNFs as well, who knows? Still, still quite a ways to, to get there. 19th now. able to launch it a bit further into the tunnel turn than everybody. Oh, except that was a bit too far. Oh no, here comes Beerswall. It's gonna get up the inside. Down to third gear win. He really slammed on the binders there. Gotta carry some speed around the outside. He's gonna come back on me. Nothing like turn three of Pocono. I don't know what it is. It's just so awesome. A lot of times, so the question is, why do I have my steering wheel to the right on the straights? That's a lot of times how oval cars are set up. It's actually more more done for drivers. So if you see how far I have to turn it to the left in the corners, if I had the wheel straight on the straights, I'd have to turn it even further. So it keeps your hands in a better position um, you know, while you're driving, so you don't have to turn quite as far in the corners. Bit out wide there. Inside. All clear. Right, got in deeper than him. Take the right line coming out. That gains me so much time. Look at me just pull away from the group behind. I know it's. They always talk anytime. NASCAR races here, they talk about the turns, and turn one here is Trenton, turn two is Indianapolis, turn three is Milwaukee, but I don't know, I don't know that's true. To me, it's nothing like Milwaukee. I mean, because you're coming in at such a higher speed, it drives completely different. Same with turn two here, it doesn't feel anything like Indianapolis, but uh, it's a really neat design for a racetrack, and I think it makes some of the most interesting racing, especially as a driver. I think it can get really strung out and stuff. So as a spectator, I mean, I've been to Pocono a handful of times. This here comes Beerschwal again. I left him some space there, but he's not going to take it. He's coming right up there. Here we go. You know, I've been been to Pocono for IndyCar races um, every year but one that they went in the in the more recent times, and uh, it's hard to see the cars, you know, on the backstretch and stuff. And you know, I could imagine cup being strung out and you know it's not not everybody's cup of tea i don't think there's anything wrong with that but driving this track is so awesome it's a hard track and i think that's also why a lot of folks don't love it as sim racers because it's it's not an easy oval here comes your swallow up the inside oh he's going for it this time well here he comes with another car who do we got there ah oh, jimmy means Parsons is coming up too. My tires are really giving up. Inside. All clear. Inside. 
Phil Parsons going to slide up on the inside. Caution. But, oh, slow car on the inside. Looks like Jeff Bodine. Engine blow or something. All right. That's so good for me. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what I needed. Thank God. It was turning into a bit of a nightmare there. I could really feel the tire starting to give it up. All right, we'll get four new ones. I gotta make sure I don't mess up my pit stop this time. If I do, definitely coming in a second time. <laughs> Looks like Jeff Bodine blew an engine though, so it's another, it's a Hendrick car out of it. Still in the top 20. We're doing, we're doing all right. So I got around Bodine there. Jimmy Means got around me, but was for 20th at the time. All right, we got to catch up the uh, the pack. The pit lanes are still closed. There's a guy with a red flag at the end of the pit lane, so you can tell if it's open or not. Man, things got real strung out. I was so slow. I was losing a ton of time to Earnhardt up front there. Darlington might be harder. I have a tough time with Darlington in, in NASCAR 2003. You're right. If, if another 19 cars in front of me blow up, then I can win this race. If I don't blow up, that could happen. So keep that in mind. That's why I don't... Like, I could ring it out more in second gear when I'm making a start, but I'm a little worried I might blow the engine. Keep an eye on my water temperature. So we got oil temp, water temp. Those are real gauges in the cockpit, and uh, I haven't had any issues. No lights or anything. I was a little worried about that after the crash, just hitting the front end. Sometimes you can overheat the car a bit. All right. Okay, road will be open this time. Let's make a nice, clean pit stop this time. Okay, road speed 70, 50, 500 seconds. All right, seeing the, seeing the pit stall. Ooh. Saw the Valvoline sign go down. It's just behind me, though. All right. I made it this time. Nice and clean in. Yeah, it makes me scared. I mean, the... All right, we'll get out. Get out of the pits. All the way to the last line. Your road speed 70. 50, 500 seconds. Come on now. Just ride that speed limit. Keeping an eye on my tack, mostly. I think I gained a few spots here. It's a good pit stop. It's a good pit stop as we're coming to halfway. <laughs> Told you, this is an endurance race. I have done very few full races in my in my time with NASCAR 2003. They're always memorable when I do one. Now, it makes me nervous these days that Pocono... You know, I would love it to have IndyCar. I think that's controversial these days. Um, I always had a lot of fun going to those races, and uh, I love Super Speedway IndyCar racing. I think it's a shame that the Indy 500 is really the only one. I know Texas kind of is technically that, but, you know, Fontana, Michigan, Pocono, like that fast Super Speedway stuff, we don't have it much. Uh, but it makes me more nervous that NASCAR only goes to this track once now. And I know they do a lot of, like, SCCA racing and stuff on the infield road course, but... I don't know. It doesn't seem healthy for the future of the track that there's only one event a year. One big event. Would I ever do a full Coke 600? <laughs> I don't know. This might be a one-off. I don't know if I'm jumping into this. We'll see, I guess, how, how many folks enjoy this today and the kind of reception it gets. And I think if I if I am to do more of this, it'll be pretty infrequent and, and spontaneous. But it could be fun randomly once in a while to do, uh, to do one of these long NASCAR races. 12th. I'm in t uh, an honest 12th right now. I'm in an, a very much honest 12th halfway through the race. Yeah, I think that yeah, you're right, Andrew. The longest is four and a half hours, and uh, we might be headed for that at the rate this is going today. We're Two hours, 18 into the stream. I don't know how long into the stream I started the race, but it wasn't too long after the start, so. 
I knew it was going to be a long one. I hope you're enjoying it so far. It's been fun. I'm a little disappointed I had one wreck. I was hoping to get through this without crashing, just for the uh, the pride of it, but still doing all right. I'm, I'm very surprised that it didn't crash during that restart earlier on. The last restart when I took two tires and uh, I think we were four wide through turn one. <laughs> Double duty stream. I know, should I do an Indy 500 and Coke 600 in one day? That would be a heck of an event. I don't know if any streamer, has any streamer ever done that? I'm sure, well, if iRacing gets the Indy 500 back, he could do it against real people. There's rumor that IndyCar is going to go back to Milwaukee next year, which is good. Um, I mean, they should go there. That's it is just a classic IndyCar track, you know. And uh, I would be, I would love it if they went to New Hampshire, my home track. Very similar to Milwaukee, but I wouldn't say no. You know, maybe you could take take away the double header at Iowa. Or the, I mean, if people like the double header at Iowa, that's fine. I just think. I have a hard time imagining today's race at Iowa is going to go differently than yesterday's. You know. Be one to go this time, bud. Okay, here comes your lap card inside. There's going to be a lot of chaos up front here, so just be ready. All right, buddy, give your seatbelt a tug for me, all right? I mean, this is not nearly as exhausting. It's nowhere near as exhausting as real life, so I think it would be quite easy to do the 1100 in one day, but the time of it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Those guys that do the 24-hour races solo, it's a different kind of crazy. I tried, so there's a question from Virtua in the chat about iRacing's AI. I was, I was trying out, so I got a full like car set for the 1987 season with the 87 Cup cars that have AI. And I set them up at Charlotte, and I couldn't, I couldn't get through two laps without them wrecking. Every single restart. They just would run into the walls. I mean, there's nothing you can do to change it. Like, at least in, in this, I could redo the AI lines. I could change all the numbers and stuff to make them behave better. So, I don't know. It was just discouraging. Maybe they're, they're probably better at other tracks, but I feel like Charlotte would be a track that they uh, they would work well at. Ah, smooth. Thank you. Always appreciate your hard work. Now, this is just fun. This is hardly work. But I appreciate, appreciate the five bucks. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would think Charlotte would be one of the target tracks to make work well in iRacing, and it just didn't, so. All right, coming to the restart. P12, we've got a whole bunch of lapped cars on the inside. As with the rest of the restarts, I have a feeling it's going to be somewhat chaos. We're over halfway. We have at least two pit stops to go in the race, depending on how the yellows coming fall. Green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get them. All right, here we go. Take the cars off. Be ready. Be ready. I lost sight of the flag right as we were right as we were coming to it. Uh, third gear just kills me. Here comes Beerschwa on the right. We got new tires. Just gonna be careful coming out of turn one. We got a bunch of slow cars here. Oh god. Stacking up through turn one. Keep it on the low side. Oh, right into the grass. Don't do that. <laughs> I lost so many spots there. Everybody be nice, be nice through here. Stuck behind Ricky Rudd now. I just gotta get through this. I'm not worried about my position or anything. I think Buddy Boys is like really uh, throwing a wrench in the works here. All right, come out of turn three. We got the wide front stretch in front. Should have plenty of space for activities. I didn't kiss the 24, Neil Bonnet did. He's right behind him now. He might not be happy with him. Ah, oh, we'll clear all those guys. It's actually Randy LaJoy that is extremely slow back there. Really launch it into turn one. New tires feel so good. So I should I should start thinking about adjusting the car a bit. I mean, it's been a little tight all day. And uh, I, could, I could add a little wedge or take a little wedge out of it. That might loosen her up just a skosh. Could add some track bar. That would be more on the exit of the corner, as I understand it, to make it a little looser coming out. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm up into 
the top 20 and was almost in the top 10. And uh, makes me not want to change much. Get around Bobby Wallach's car. Forget who's driving that. It's not him, though. Six quicker state jumps down low. Was that Rutman? I know that car more is when, when Ricky Rudd drove it. Yeah, I've seen Steve, Super GT, Steve's 200 lap Nürburgring thing. That seem, It just doesn't seem fun. I do this for fun. I mean, I, I'm happy he was able to raise a bunch of money for charity and stuff. And I guess that's the reason I would do it, is to raise money for charity. Because it doesn't seem that much fun. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's something I'll do. Good luck, Nick, on the, uh, on the SRM. I didn't do very well this time out. I did leg three pretty much blind because I was just kind of fed up with it, so I just did it. And luckily I made it through clean, or without without a super rally for leg three, but. Oh yeah, squat the car down into turn one there. We've got uh, Ken Schrader here on the outside with the Red Baron car. We meet again, I started right behind him. that late turn in, see if I can pick up pick up the throttle a bit and run it down to turn three. That was actually pretty nice that time. <laughs> I have not agreed to the double duty charity stream. Maybe. I would have to do it. It would be kind of fun to do in an old sim. So do like IndyCar 2 for the 500 and NASCAR 2 for the for the 600. Keep it more my my speed. You could always do like an iRacing thing, but it'd be kind of more fun to do old school sims. So I'll think about it. We've got a whole year <laughs> until that becomes relevant. Alright, I'm just keeping my eye on Schrader behind, but should be able to pull him out. Up to 14. How did this happen? I was having a bad race, I thought. Trader's going to look to the inside. He's got Arrington trying to jump him. <laughs> no, we're not doing our factor. I can't imagine. All right, up to fourth gear. I know, my favorite era of NASCAR is like 1981 through 94. Like those cars. That, that decade and a couple years are just... Very cool to me. This is right at the height of it. There is no frills race cars. They're very much minimalist type cars. Right, I've got a Buddy right on me now. I'm chasing this 26. He's going to look up the inside of Beerswall. His Buddy is going to get a good run up the inside of me here. Two by two, stacked up. I can't really go full throttle right now. Down to third gear. Schrader's going to look back up the inside and get stuck out wide behind Beerswall. Got to get a good run coming down the front stretch. Thought about going three wide there, but... I uh, could have taken the low line there. Schrader's going to fill it up. A lot of understeer there. Push. I just think in their head, it, it's such a bias because of when I grew up. But in my head, when I think of NASCAR, I think of this. Like this kind of racing. 80s, early 90s. Bright painted, simple paint schemes. Tons of cars on the track at the same time. Long races that are just kind of these endurance races. Very much, very much a, uh, I don't know, just a happy memory. 
just way behind these guys. She's Schrader diving down there. He's making me nervous. Got stuck up right behind Beerschwell. I had to throttle it there a little bit. Get up the inside of him. Maybe I can take him through the tunnel here and just clear him. I think he's the one holding me up. Good. That was a nice pass. Satisfying to uh, to pass through the tunnel there. Push Harrington. I don't want to go three wide. Maybe on the final laps. See if we can get Arrington in front of the 26, and then I can take them one by one. We're up to 14th position. Whoa. Outside. Well, on Arrington through the tunnel here. He's going to get the 26. Is it Joe Rutman? I think it is. him anyway. There we go. I've been saying beer swell the whole time and it's Tommy Gale. So the if you missed the beginning, the I tried to set the real lineup for this race. So it's all the whatever drivers drove each of the cars. The paint schemes I think are ninety nine percent accurate for the race. Tried to try to match everything up, get all the all the cars, all the stars. It's a forty car race. I left one car out because I could not find a picture of what it looked like. I'm driving for the Sadler Brothers, number 95, that they fielded for Davey Allison in a handful of races. And I've, our, I've named our driver Buddy Roscoe. He's a uh, hot shoe out of New England. This is his first NASCAR race, and I think we're doing pretty well for him. 13th. Right, Arrington's going to Throwing up the inside of Baker here. Baker's still a lap down, so. Player high. A little bit of space to play with behind me. It's not going to go three wide. It's just too many laps to go for stuff like that. Buddy Roscoe had a picture of Richie Axelson on his wall growing up, but he didn't, uh, he never met him. This is fun. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I don't know why this restart, once I had four freshies, it's been a lot of fun trying to drive here. All right, get up the inside of Baker. I'm feeling really good with the car now. I, I hopefully, hopefully I don't speak too soon, but it's uh, feeling very drivable at the moment. I'm trying to stay away from Arrington's quarter panel. Get around uh, Buddy Baker at least. the corner there that felt so good and we're looking good just looking at the water temp it's it's not too bad just under 210 Things seem to be holding together for our, uh, our old Chevrolet. It is a Monte Carlo. I don't think I said that at any point. That's what the Sadler brothers entered. I don't know much about them. They entered races for quite a few years, but only here and there. 
they weren't they weren't a team that was ever racing weekly i think 94 was their last entry and 86 might have been their first that that, that they made a race i think they tried to enter a few in 85 but they made like four or five races with davy out of the eight or so that they attempted so attempted this pocono for mr roscoe here all right, nice run. So waited a little bit longer on that shift to fourth. Got to stick it in the inside of Buddy here. Buddy Arrington. Buddy versus Buddy. He stuck up behind Rudd. Ah, couldn't quite get it to stick. Really bogged down. Maybe should have tried third gear there. It's going to carry the speed on the high side. Tuck back in. Watch for this run from Baker behind. Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. All in a row. There's a lot of buddies in this race, actually. There's a buddy, bo uh, buddy, yeah, buddy boys as well. Has there ever been four buddies in one NASCAR race? We're doing it right now. All right, nice run again. I'm a little bit, a little bit quicker on that run this time. Really rev it. Picking up a slight draft from Ricky Rudd in front. Uh, I thought about third. I think I might need to grab third in the first corner here to have the speed on the exit. Harrington gets back around. And he's actually going to have a run on Ricky. See if we can carry the speed and get underneath Ricky as well. Done this move before. Side by side with Ricky Rudd now. We got Neil Bonnet coming up to join the fun. It's a good little scrap. Ooh, comes Buddy Arrington closing the door again. That's how I crashed the first time. I've learned. All right. Follow. Follow Arrington. Might try third gear here through turn one. See if I can. Player high. Aaron <laughs> wants to jump out from under me doing that. Ah, oh, yeah. That might be the move. Just out of nowhere, tons of speed. Didn't quite get the line there. I have no idea. So what? We pit at halfway, right? So technically about halfway through the run. Got quite the gap in front of me now. A very dirty windshield. I know I'm like flirting with the top 10 here. Let's see who I've got in front of me. All right, the 18th. So I'm um, facing Tommy Ellis then, right? car. I maybe need to start doing third gear and turn one all the time. I felt so slow. Yeah, we'll get our, our windscreen cleaned up at the pit stop. To grab the wheel differently, my left thumb is going numb from hooking it. <laughs> get comfortable here doing the downshift to third for turn one because I think that's the move to uh, just make a little bit more speed get it right there just before I get back in the throttle do it that way I already have my foot on the throttle I don't have to heel toe or anything this feels like feels like we're headed into a long green flag run. So here comes Arrington coming up. I didn't quite get through the tunnel turn that well that time. Oh, I really floated into three. I'm really pushing the pushing the issue there. All 
All right, so 80 to go. We're going to have to pit in about 20. So it should be just two, pit, two more pit stops. I almost cannot see the wall coming out of turn number one, and I wonder on the stream if, if you all can see it, because I know it gets a little crunchy over the internet. Arrington has got a lot of speed, and uh, once again, it did not make a good tunnel turn there. We'll get a tear off in the pits. I think this is the longest green flag run we've had now. Or thereabouts. I think we might have done 30 laps early in the race. So I'm chasing down the 18. He's four seconds up. I see a slow car. I think it's LaJoy again. That's the length of the bush race, then. Complete. If you go look at pictures of, of Pocono in the early 90s, it had this gray wall. It's, it's very bizarre, I agree. I did take a quick look if I could make it the white and red, and the way the textures are set up, it would have been very time-consuming. So, we're uh, dealing with it the way it is. Other, I mean, this track's beautifully done, though. I love all of Thunder 98's tracks. They really help bring this era alive alright we've got Randy here and uh, it's going to hold me up a bit coming down into turn 3 Outside. thank you LaJoy all clear I can see the 18 up there I think I'm actually pulling him it's 3.3 seconds last time 2.8 alright just got to stick with it I'll catch up to him that's, that's for 10th position. <laughs> really aggressive. Able to pull a little bit on Buddy, but it's keeping me company all day. We've got a pack of cars in front. Just in front of Tommy Ellis here in the 18. It's like a wad of eight cars or something. I do hope we get green flag stops at least once in this race. It's fun. It's fun to do and go through that whole cycle. Alright, they're sorting themselves out up there. I didn't quite get down to the to the inside there. Just try to carry the speed. I'm trying to keep my eyes on the uh, temperatures as well, because I'm definitely using the engine a bit more, shifting down a third for turn one. got stuck up behind these two in front. I think it's our friend Buddy Boys. 75 to go. Uh, there's a lot of folks in here now. It's cool. I never know when I do something different that uh, if, if folks will enjoy it or not, so it's nice to see you all here.
All right, catching the 17. I think this is Poncho Carter. I'm racing him in my IndyCar seasons. Outside. We'll get, we'll get Buddy as well. <laughs> I did not expect that. That's actually good though. That's gonna put me a lot closer to Ellis. I feel like I'm looking through like a some kind of like filter or something. I can barely see. Super far off from pit stops now. 18 leaves the door open a little bit there. I gotta get around him pretty quick because Arrington's come with me the whole time. He's not far off. Might have a run a chance to do it this time though. Not sure what Freelander is, but. Chuck it into turn one, clear him. There we go. All right, up into the top ten. Top ten. And this is, I think, a legit top ten. I don't think there's any funny business going on here with pace or pit stops or anything like that. So we really mess up the tunnel turn there. a smoking car in the pit lane, I think. I cannot wait till I get this windscreen clean. <laughs> If it's bugging you guys, just it's bugging me a lot. All right, we're getting close to pit stops, and I'm wondering when I should do it. I'm just worried if I pit and then get stuck under the yellow, but I could pit and have fresher tires for a few laps. I'm also in the top 10, and so, I mean, the likelihood that I win this or something is pretty low, and so it might be good just to stick with a safe strategy, and so wait till I see a bunch of others coming into the pits, like the leader, and then pit with him. I'm not even taking the right lines anymore because I can't see anything. Yeah, I'm going to go until the... If other cars start pitting, I'm going to pit because I'll be so bad on tires. But I'm just going to go until I hear my crew tell me that some other cars are pitting. Ugh, a lot of push there. I hope it's soon. I can feel I feel the tires starting to go a little bit, but also I can't see anything. Harrington's catching up to me again. Quite far off my best lap now. It was a 157 last lap. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I am I'm chasing Dave Marcus. Stuck between Buddy Arrington and Dave Marcus. You're in good company. Still nobody on the pit lane. really wide there. Just didn't grip. That's gonna let Arrington catch right up to me. It's right there now. Sixty-nine laps to go. That was bad. I carried no speed there. All right, here comes Buddy. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of like that live to fight another day mantra. Oh, I will I will take my line through, through turn three. As soon as I see a car on pit lane, I'm going. That's better this time. Turn three there. Well, it's good. At least I'm holding off uh, Arrington behind me, but he's. He is right there the entire time, so one slip up. Yeah, it does, this is what I'm talking about. I can't imagine on the screen how it looks, so I can barely make out the gray wall, especially coming out of turn one. I wonder if any driver said anything about that in real life. Like, it, it was like this for quite a few years. I want to say starting in, like, 89. But it just makes it, it seems like it's so hard to see. Should I pit? I mean, it's putting me at risk. If I pit and then a yellow flag comes out, that's really like race over from a finishing perspective. But I feel like the new tires would really help me out at this point. And I really would only need one more stop. Wow, really close to the wall there. Catching a group of cars in front, but I, I don't know if they're on the lead lap or not. I mean, I'm definitely, if I pit, I'm going a lap down. There's no way the leader's not somewhere behind me at this point. got plenty of fuel to make it another one more one more stop after this one it seems like the tires don't quite last as long as the fuel does they, they really wear out at the end of a stint catching uh, Jeffrey Bodine here who we saw stopped early on in the race or earlier Really, really deep there. I'm 
just about the same speed as Marcus in front of me. So... I still think it makes sense to stay out till everybody else pits. So remember, it'll, it'll hurt me on the other side of things, too, where... My tires will start wearing out sooner than everybody else's, so... There really wouldn't be a NASCAR stream unless people were debating something <laughs> in the chat. Remember, you're not going to solve any of the world's issues talking about it here. Jeffrey Bodine's quite slow on the inside there. He's going to pit. Oh, there's cars on the pits. Alright, next time by. Next time by, I'm coming in. Hopefully there's not too many cars on the pit lane, but it looks like we're going to get our first green flag pit stops. Finally clean this windscreen. Leader, don't be a road here comes the leader. I mean, if he's just getting on the pit road now, that means I'm only like a half a lap down. is not not too crazy <laughs> I guess you have to argue about something but it's only the NASCAR folks that argue about anything the IndyCar folks never argue all right just under 70 there and just trying to find my pit stall there it is a couple cars up from the 81 Look down to first gear nice and gently into it drive through Randy LaJoy sign there we go That was a good that was a good entry. Just need to exit without speeding and hitting anything. Got one more stop after this one. Go, 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 go. All the way to the lamp. Ah, that was a bad exit. There's my friend Dave Marcus. Right in front of me in Helen Ray. That's a couple cars. I think there's Harry Gant as well. It's working out for me. Bodine's trying to make his way. I think he's a lap down, though. All right, Jeff Bodine on the outside. He's got hot tires, remember? I got cold ones. <laughs> so, so crazy how much I can see now. Ugh, that feels so different. All right, here comes everybody. Eric Gantz up the inside. Be careful here. I have so much more grip. It's... It's insane. Oh, it feels like I'm Superman now. Grab right up the inside of Dave Marcus. Eighth place. All right. I know it's like it's like a totally new race. It should hopefully not get as bad this time. If uh... oh, maybe don't need third gear in the first corner. That was very nearly a spin. The windscreen will hopefully not get as bad this time if we're just green flag. It's it's when you're behind a lot of cars that gets worse. So we'll see. I gotta be really careful. I'm really launching it into the corners because before I was just sliding. I think back in these times they didn't have tear offs. They were actually just using like a cloth, a rag with some Windex. Yeah, it is them Mr. Feelgoods, ain't it? All right, we got DK. I'm chasing the five. It looks like Neil Bonnet. Or no, Bobby Hillen's actually the car in front of me now. And the eight. Oh, those two, they're scrapping up front. Bobby Allison and uh, Bobby Hillen are fighting with each other up there. mind people arguing in the chat. Just be nice to each other. That's the only thing I ask. All 
I can't believe I'm in seventh place now. I think Bodine is a lap down. He, we saw him, he was the reason for one of the yellows earlier. He was stopped coming out of uh, turn three. that time. Alright, so if this goes green, we're going to pit around lap 170. Really when things start feeling terrible again and, and other cars pit, so we'll have to see when that'll be, but Probably around lap 170, and then that'll be it. That'll be the pits, unless we get a yellow. Catching Bobby Allison here. I don't know if Bobby's on the lead lap. I don't think he is. I think he's got a crumpled hood from, uh, I think we saw him hit the wall, maybe? him this lap. The King is coming up. I don't know if Richard Petty's on my lap, though, because it says the 71's behind me. It is. Yeah, Petty got around Dave Marcus then, and he's chasing me down for 7th. Here he comes. Richard's got quite a lot of speed. He's going to try it into the tunnel turn. He's looking towards the inside. inside. Oh, he dives it in there to take around the outside. Really, really let the car hang. Inside. Carry a bit more speed than him, though. Sticking that Pontiac nose in there. A little hot into turn three. I almost lost the car there. Inside. Stand on the accelerator on the way out. Gotta pinch him a little bit. I mean, this is this is when we really need to be racing. Every spot counts at this point. Let's see if I can hold him off for a few laps. Maybe he gives up on it for the time being. Whoa. Just scraped the wall there. It's all right. That he's not close enough this time to make the move. Used a lot of tire there. I'm really throwing it into three. I'm playing with fire. So it's so easy to lose the car there. King Richard coming up now. He's coming on the inside. He's got so much power. Alright, Richard Petty gets around me. He's got a lot more straight line speed than I do. He's just like that tick faster everywhere. See how the run runs run ages him.
Dave Marcus is coming up too, so try not to get swallowed up, but I think I le left quite a few cars in the pit stops, and uh, I'm paying for that now because they're just a little bit quicker. So I just got to do my best to hang out with them and uh, see where that puts me. I was, I was faster than Marcus right before the pit stop, just slightly. So I think if I can keep them behind me, I can stand a chance. Marcus is right on my tail. Oh, understeer a lot right there, right up to the wall. I might have caught it slightly. It's going to slide up the inside. I should have maybe adjusted the car a little bit on that stop. So we'll side by side into the tunnel turn. That's sketchy. We got Harry Gant too, the 33. So Mr. September up the inside. It's all right. There's nobody behind him. So All clear. Yeah. So, so I'm fighting in the top ten, but this is the top ten right here. Arrogance in tenth right now. I'll see if I can pass Marcus back up the inside. Get it into third gear there. Wow. Got a little bit of speed on the bottom. Player high. Get on the outside of me here. Player high. Got to get a good exit though, because he'll come back. A bit narrow on the entry. I can't really carry the speed through there like you should. Lot of throttle to balance the car coming into that heavy braking. Going down to third in turn one is crazy. It was tough to do the first couple laps of the run because I was so much faster coming down the front stretch, but with the extra grip of the tires, you don't really need it, and it was kind of spinning the car, but now that I've lost a little bit of that edge on the tires, the, the speed gets down to enough where it makes sense to downshift into turn one. So, and then it makes me so much faster because I think I'm pulling Petty back now. Yeah, kind of heel and toe. You got to match the revs. I was showing earlier in the race, you can kind of do the downshift in two ways. You can wait until the uh, the car, the, you don't need the brake anymore. So I'll do that in turn one here. Well, left foot brake, and then kind of wait till the car is slow enough where I don't need the brake anymore, and then you can just lift the throttle with your throttle foot, which is fine, because uh, you don't really need the engine to brake into turn one there. But once we get down to turn three here, it is really helpful to uh, downshift the engine to to brake. So we got who's this Jody Ridley? But we'll come down here into turn three, and we'll right foot brake because we'll want to downshift to help slow the car down, and we'll blip the throttle with the it's kind of the side of my foot, not the heel. But you could do it the same way as I was doing turn one, but you wouldn't be able to use the engine to brake as much. All right, get it up, fourth gear. I think Ridley is a lap down there. So sneak around into the last 50, so last quarter. It's a long race, I'm feeling it now. The first half of it I felt fine, but it's starting to, uh, to feel like a long one. But the second half has been a lot quicker. There's been no yellows for almost two runs now. We're getting on near the middle of the second run without a, without a caution.
The yellow right now would not be ideal because we wouldn't really be close enough to the end to make it without pitting again, so it would kind of cause us to have a mini pit stop. I guess it would solve any issues with worn tires towards the end of the race because we'd, we'd still have to pit again, though. Or maybe. I mean, it depends how long the yellow is. All right, we got Yarborough in front. His rear end looks a little crunched up. I wonder if he got in one of those crashes earlier on. Still turning 161s, which is good. down be nice now Player high. Ronnie Bouchard, but I think he's a lap down. I can't believe we've ended up in the top 10 through all this. It didn't feel like the car was was that quick. But uh, attrition and just being consistent, I guess. Even with the crash earlier on, who would have guessed when I was in the wall in turn three a while back that I'd be fighting for a top 10 here at the end. In the last quarter, whoa, Ronnie Bouchard makes a move there. All right. <laughs> like very processional and then moments of sheer terror sheer terror as a car makes an unexpected move we'll get Bouchard there I just noticed the hearts on the chat what are the hearts I've never seen that before must be a new feature from YouTube. Thanks for the hearts. Catching back up to this little pack in front. I mean, this is my, this is sixth place, potentially. And I made up so much time on the pit stop last time, you just never know. And now their faces. I have the chat on my main screen here so I can read it while I'm while I'm driving, and it's not distracting at all. <laughs> have the, the little faces and hearts and stuff. Oh boy, here it goes. All right, JD McDuffie is in front here. And uh, I think he's a lap down, all right to the wall. This is where concentration gets a little more tricky. It's just, it's been a long run of the same type of thing. Gotta stay alert. We're getting towards this bitter end here. Get up the inside of JD. doing there. 
locked up the brakes slightly. All right, carry speed. Got no pressure from behind. Harry Gant's fallen off like three seconds. And I'm just trying to chase down the king here, Richard Petty. We've got one more pit stop to go. Should the window for that should really open up here in the next 10 laps. But uh, like last time, I think I'm going to wait till I hear that the leaders are pitting. I just think I can hop these guys in front if I do as well in the pits as I did last time. And so it's not really worth trying to do something risky that could put me a lap down or anything like that. Windscreen's starting to get a bit dirty again. Not as bad as last time, though. That was brutal. in front still battling with each other it's not holding them up quite enough I'm down in the 158s now for speed We've got Wallach's car in front for turn three then. Looks like Petty's going up the inside of Bodine. Uh, just didn't quite get the line there. Not going to have the right run on Wawick. A little bit late on him. <laughs> it was very nearly the Arrington accident from earlier. Hillen in front of Richard Petty there, and those two are for position. I'm, I know that uh, Bodine in front is at least one lap down, but he's still fast. But he's not a factor in this in this finish at all. If I play my cards right here through the final series of laps and pit stop and all that, I think I could maybe leap Petty and Hillen through the pits. I was very quick last time through there. I think I gained three seconds on uh, on Dave Marcus. So if I can gain three seconds, I'll have plenty of time to uh, to work past those two. Hilton's car. He's been very slow today, but he's still running. I don't think we've got many DNFs. I think there's just a couple. I know Terry Labonte has been out for the entire race pretty much. But not sure who else is out. 
got a lot of different mechanicals, but it seems like they've mostly been able to get the cars back running like Bodine in front here. Which is pretty realistic. Right, let's see if we can get past Kramer here down along Pond Street. gonna have a run on me very slow through the tunnel corner just don't have the grip anymore to like chuck it in there tires are very much near the end of their life now start watching for cars on the pit road although 35 laps would be a little a little bit too much gear through the tunnel. I don't know if that works. So then we need it for fourth for just a second before turn three. I think it's better just to carry the speed through the tunnel turn, but it's hard once the tires get worn out like this. Gantz slipped off five and a half seconds, so there's truly nobody behind me. It's really just what's in front of me here. I think the patience sticker first appeared in NASCAR Racing 3. I think they had that on the dashboard. Which, uh, played a lot of that sim. Oh, car in the pits. Who's that? Oh, that looks like Bobby Gerhardt. It's a little early. 34 laps would be a pretty decent run at the end. I'd worry about my tires right at the end compared to everybody else if they pit a few laps later. Alright, I think I'm going to pit with 30 to go. Even if there's nobody else in the pit lane, and it's a little risky, but you only live once. It might give me a lap or two on freshies while everybody else is pitting. I don't think in the end it will be that big of a difference. Have a clean pit lane. And uh, can maybe gain a little bit of time just being on fresh tires. Wallach's car pulling out of the pits there. Gerhardt pulling out. It's almost a full lap you lose, but not quite. Top 10 is way better than I was expecting. A couple more laps here. there into turn one. I'm like, I'm 
exactly the same speed as this group in front. It's like I can't catch them. I'm not losing them much. I mean, it's they're actually pulling on me very slightly, but like a tenth over the past ten laps. All right, hits this time. Coming in. And uh, the big thing, what I hope is that I come in, I can do like a couple laps under green while then everybody else pits. Put myself at risk here for a yellow flag. So if there's a yellow flag, well... <laughs> That's a hot pit entry. I think I got to slow down just in time. But if I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to go a lap down here. And so if, if the yellow comes out, I'm going to be kind of screwed. I used those tires to their full extent. Please, no yellow. Final pit stop, though. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, a little bit of damage or something. Alright. Yeah, I barely got under that speed limit there, but I did. Bobby Allison fading in front. All right, I got new tires. Everybody's on super old tires. This is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. Just gotta make sure I don't crash. The car feels so different for the first like three or four laps with new tires. It's those uh, Mr. Feel Goods, as it was said. Wow, wow, I made a mess of the tunnel turn. Tunnel turn. I see a couple cars in the pit lane, so everybody should start pitting. And uh, I mean, I'm back in 17th now because I'm a lap down, but assuming it all goes as planned, I should gain everything back and then hopefully a little bit more. So I'm gonna have a few good laps here, hopefully. Shouldn't have put it down to third there. And then hopefully the tire difference isn't so great that they start passing me back. We'll have to see. Not doing the best laps here. It's so hard adjusting to the new tires again. It's like I've got an infinite grip now. Slide it into turn three there. All right, cars are peeling off. Going for that undercut. Inside. Pass around the outside. All player inside. <laughs> See you later, guys. New tires. Getting towards the bitter end now. I really hope this works out. Comes Yarborough into the pits in front of me. I want to hear that leader is on pit road thing. Back up to 15. So I'm still inside of my goal for the day, but I know I can get a top 10, so I really hope. Hope I can make that happen. Check for Ridley here in front. Man, he's so slow. <laughs> Give him a little bump through the, the tunnel turn. There's Dale Earnhardt. I think that's the leader. Oh no. Hey, road is closed, 
That's so disappointing. That's you gamble when you gamble. What is that song? When you gamble, sometimes you lose. I don't know how this is gonna work out. I'm so close to. Oh man. I'm gonna be like first car a lap down. This is what happens. Ah oh, man, that that really takes the uh, takes the wind out of the sails. We'll see what happens here. I'm not gonna pit. I mean, I just pit four laps ago. No one to hold them, no one to fold them. Well, oh, it's almost a bit of a fold. Ah, that was the one thing I needed to not happen. And I almost unlapped myself because Dale Earnhardt's right here. Dang, that was such a long run too. We went, how long did we go? 70 laps or something? Under green? Well, I think that pretty much locks me into a 14th it place finish then. Yeah, can always restart. Yeah, right. That is so disappointing. Yeah, there's no free pass or anything. I'm gonna be right behind, well probably, uh, Tommy Ellis in front. Is it Tommy Ellis? I keep forgetting, but they're going to pit. And so I'm going to be the first car on the inside. And uh, as we saw a few restarts back, I don't think I've got anything for Earnhardt and them up front. P12 now. Oh, I'm just going to miss out on a top 10. Yeah, I'm actually going to start... I think I'm going to start on the outside because I'm not actually a lap down anymore. I don't know, we'll see how this all shakes out. I guess what I could hope for is that I start in the front and there's a yellow immediately and somehow I get around to uh, take the yellow before the actual leader. Not a lot of race left. We'll see, we'll see how it all shakes. Yeah, I'm going to be right up front, like I'm a fake leader. <laughs> no, there's no wave around. They didn't do that, I don't think. There's definitely no wave around in NASCAR 2003. I don't know if they did one back in uh, the 80s at all. I don't think they did. Hey, there's a big chance, there's a lot of cars that are slow that are going to be on the inside line. And there's a big chance there's another yellow. And so it is not unrealistic that I keep this lap. Yeah, the wheel, so I see a few comments asking about my wheel. So it's a CSL DD, I got the 8 uh, Newton meter one. And then this rim is the Fanatec Classic rim. Um, I have it on a podium hub. And I do have a little, uh, I don't think you can see it, but I have a little quick release because I don't use buttons on most of these wheels, so I put a little thin quick release so I don't have to have a bunch of podium hubs. <laughs> now, I'm not going to create, I could create a yellow, but I'm not going to, that would be cheap. This has been a great race. I'm, I'm so happy for anybody that fools around with NASCAR 2003, you know... That sometimes it's just chaos and not very realistic. And I think this has been an extremely realistic race so far. And I've had I've had a lot of fun with this. So no matter how it ends, I think this has been a great success. But I'm hoping hoping I can at least hold on to this P12. I mean, there's nobody in front of me, so I'm gonna have to come around a whole lap to get anything else. And then as long as I can hold on to 12, I just have to hope there's chaos behind me. And uh, that I can keep this lap, start at the rear, and pass a few more cars and get that top 10. This feels like a long shot, but we'll see.
But I appreciate everybody being in here today. I'm sure, uh, sure quite a few of you are going to watch the, the real cup race at this track later today. Hopefully that's also a good one. All right, we should get the one to go this time, I imagine. We got one car going in the pits behind me. Just seeing the mirror. All right, so we're going to have Kenny Schrader up the inside. I got Tim Richmond right behind me. Richmond is actually behind me in position as well. Come on, you can see how many cars are in the inside line. There's very few cars on the lead lap now. So if I did somehow retain this lap, and uh, and get it back. It wouldn't be that crazy to to get a few more positions. But yeah, I've got Tim Richmond behind me physically, and he's also behind me in position. So he's in twelfth. He's also trying to get his lap back like me. I hope I can out drag Schrader here. Remember, I'm on like three or four lap older tires than everybody else. I'm hoping they still got the good. Good stuff in them. They should be cooled down. And, uh, oh, this is going to be interesting. Last time I started up front here, it did not go super well, but it's a little bit different scenario this time. I'm going to use every, every RPM that second gear has here to try to get it into turn one first. We'll see. Maybe can jump a little bit. I just gotta not pass the pace car is the big uh, big goal here. All right, coming to the green. Should be the final restart. 23 laps to go. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Pay the cars off. Be ready. Be ready. Green, green, green. I think I timed that perfectly. All the way up to 9,000 RPM. Uh, Squeeze Ken Schrader a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Drag it down into turn one. I'll keep it in third gear. Oh, really sideways. <laughs> Comes Richmond on the high side. He's got Earnhardt right behind him. Oh, bounce off the wall a little bit. Get into fourth gear. Got him stacked up two by two behind me. Drifting it through the tunnel turn. <laughs> There we go. I got a little bit of a gap. Come on, yellow flag, yellow flag. That's what I need. That was a pretty good restart. I nailed that one. All right, here comes Richmond. He's got Earnhardt on the outside. Earnhardt's probably having none of this. He's not gonna like that I'm blocking him, but it is the end of the race and I need this lap. Oh, he's right in there. right there. <laughs> door to door. Ah. Bounce off each other. I'm fighting to stay on the lead lap and there goes Earnhardt by to put me a lap down. Ah. I fought as hard as I could for that but there's no stopping the old intimidator. Although I don't think he was known as that yet. Bobby Hillen's coming up. So I gotta hold on to 11th at least. One shy of a top 10. 20 to go, 20 to go. Really launch it into turn one, I got a lot of grip. Yeah, Earnhardt's just so fast. Here comes Bobby Hillen up the inside. Where did Hillen get this speed from? I was chasing him down for many, many laps. Here comes Tim Richmond as well. Now that's for position. 
I really don't want to let Richmond buy. It's the real winner of this race. Outside so hard coming in, in turn three. Car got very sideways there. Kyle Petty is looking up the inside as well. That puts me back to 12. 26 is behind us. Tim Richmond back on the inside. What? Understeering a lot there. Pushing up the track. He's going to have a better run down Long Pond Straight. <laughs> well, he's going to just clear me before the tunnel turn. The inside. Slide it through. This is pretty aggressive for 20 to go. I might run out of tires doing this, but it's a lot of fun. I cleared him. Let's try to make a run for it down the front stretch. faster than Bobby Hill in earlier. I don't know how he got around me so easily. I mean, we were, we were almost the same speed, but... I think Ricky Rudd's right on my tail now. I think Hillen must be in second then. We'll see how it all shakes out in just a few laps. Ricky Rudd up the inside. Oh, he's going to make a lunge into the tunnel turn. Oh, it bounced off the wall there. No, Richmond's going to come back. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get blocked in from Ricky here. able to get the run out of the corner like I'd like to. Got a good draft here though on Rudd down the front stretch. Richmond should block me. Squeeze three wide. They're steering so much just scrubbing the fronts. Ah. Should have adjusted the car. I didn't think of it. Make it a tad more loose. Here comes Kyle Petty up the inside. He's doing well today. Come on, I gotta get Richmond back. to go. I don't know if it's the tires or just pace, but I'm not quite able to hang with these guys. I'm driving as hard as I can, but I'm just slowly losing out. Here comes Rusty Wallace up the inside. I haven't seen him all day. Too hot here into the tunnel turn. He'll take the inside. Still in 12th. Got a, the 26 behind me, the Quaker State car. Like Joe Rutman, and he's just about a second behind me. Tim Richmond is the car in front. He's a second and a half up. 
that little pack up there. I don't know, if he gets shuffled out, maybe I can get back around him. He's not out of reach yet. The Jeff Bodine behind me. Oh, that Jeff Bodine's for position now. So he was only one lap down. I gotta try to keep Jeff behind me. Nice line through turn one. Right up to the outside wall. Bodine is closed up quite a lot behind me. It's going to be tricky to keep him behind. Just a little over 10 to go. Right, here he comes, looking up the inside. Trying to break as late as I can into turn three and close the door. Slightly too early there. Here he comes. to go and I think I'll be a lap down so there'll be one less lap for me It'd be a lot easier if nobody was breathing down my neck for it I launched it into turn three. I shifted down in the tunnel turn and then just kept it in third to see what that would do. Feels quick, but I'm really revving the engine there.
here comes Bodine up the inside. Carry speed through the corner. If I pinch him, he might not be able to actually get by me. But this is a battle for 12th right now. And I think not far off is the 26 behind him. The only other position I can realistically get, although it's not that realistic, is Richmond up front. He's three cars up the road. But I'd like to hold on to 12th here. coming out of the pits in front. Seven laps to go. Tires seem to be doing okay despite having a few extra laps on them. I don't feel that much slower than everybody else. As I could possibly launch it. It's gonna get a run up the inside. Squeeze them down low. <laughs> Make a little contact. I don't know if you'd race like this for 11th, but it's fun anyway. Not many laps left. We're racing for 12th. These races are no joke. This is one of the tougher ones, too, I think, just because all the shifting and stuff, and it's just a very, very long race. Just need to hold it here in front of Bodine for the last handful of laps. He's coming up the inside. Oh, come on now. Can't lose it here right at the end. No, he hits me. How did I hold? I don't know how I held on to that. Trying to get a run down the front stretch and get it back. I almost lost the car there. It was so close. All right, up the inside. Head down to T1. Take as much of the line as I can. Slide up in front of him a little bit. We got the 26 now to play too. I actually want Bodine to get held up with the 26 and block him coming into the tunnel turn. Hopefully the 26 can get around him. Or at least they'll hold each other up a little bit. Turn three. Just got three laps to go. Three laps to go. Holding on to P12 here. Bodine's got back around the 26 behind. Will he make another attempt at it? I don't know.
trying to run away from this number 500 car is no, no easy job at any time in history. A bit slow through the tunnel there. I didn't quite get it down to the curb. It's such a thin line. Bodine's going to come try to lunge up the inside here into turn three. I didn't quite get it slowed down enough. Get back on the gas. Cut him off. <laughs> Just kind of dime in the corner. Back onto the straight. Two laps. There's a couple cars pitting here. Maybe a few guys not calculating the fuel just right. I can only hope. Just take what I can get at this point. Bodine's gonna look up the inside. I'm in I'm in full lock and try to get this position mode now. Down to third for the tunnel turn. I haven't been doing that much today. Got a lot of cars in front. There's a big traffic jam. Full too hot into turn three. Slide up the track. All right, come to the white flag. Can see him waving it. One more. One more, just holding off Bodine here. One more time, buddy. One more time. See a bunch of cars up the road. Just use, I don't need these tires anymore after this lap, so just use every little bit of them. Go down right in the mirror there. It's gonna look as we come up to the tunnel. I was always gonna shut that door. Third gear, I'll just keep it in third for the short shoot here. Down to turn three. Final lap. Grab the line. Try not to run too deep. Get back on the gas. Put the car right up the track. Come out of turn number three. All right. Wasn't a top ten. I, I think I could have got a top ten today, but P12, and I finished the race. One lap down. We'll take a look at the full Checkers, full results here in a couple minutes, but... Oh man, what a race. That was so much fun. Even, even you know, the strategy not working out, that happens sometimes. So it's just fun to have a flat out race like that. It was such a fun, uh, fun restart at the end, trying to hold these guys off and battle side by side with them. Here comes Richard Petty on by. We'll take a look at who won and everything in a second, but <laughs> I'm tired. That was, that was a lot. 200 laps around here, 199 laps. I guess I'm doing the 200th right now, so I can still say 200, but it's no joke, even in a sim. But uh, so much fun, and I appreciate everybody watching. It was kind of random to decide to do this, but it feels like it worked out pretty well. Uh, just finished the cool down lap. I can't imagine, I mean, in real life, these guys, I guess during the pits you would have got a bottle of water or something, but the amount of, like, heat that is in the cars and everything, I just, you'd be so dehydrated at the end of this. I think it took a little less than four hours, so. Per, per the real race, I think it, that one took like four and a half, so we did pretty good. All right, we'll come find our pit box. The Sadler Brothers probably pretty happy with this one, I'd imagine, today, for old Buddy Good Roscoe's buddy. first ever race. There we go. Park it. Park it in the pits. Let's jump out of the car. All right, we're going to save the standings just in case. And we'll save the replay as well. Just in case. You never know when you'd want that. Ugh. I'm exhausted, guys. Let's put on a little music. All right. There is Dale Earnhardt getting the win. Dale Earnhardt getting the win from Bobby Hillen, Ricky Rudd, Harry Gant, Rusty Wallace, Kyle Petty, Neil Bonnet, Richard Petty, Buddy Arrington getting the ninth position. One lap down. And Tim Richmond. Tim Richmond getting a top 10. 
I could have, I could have maybe got a top 10. I could have maybe got it, just with battling with him. I mean, he was so fast, but it showed it was possible. I guess he got around Dave Marcus there towards the end. But there we are, Buddy Roscoe in P12, ahead of Jeff Bodine, Joe Rutman, Eddie Beerschwal. It was Eddie Beerschwal in the 64. I wasn't wrong. Phil Parsons, J.D. McDuffie, Ronnie Bouchard, Timmy Ellis, Jimmy Means round out your top 20. Ugh. Ken Schrader finished 21st with Bobby Allison, Kelly Arborough, Buddy Baker, DK Ulrich, uh, Jody Ridley, Pancho Carter, what is it, Jerry Cranmer, Bobby Gerhardt in 29th, and then Jack Eli in 30th. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things I could have done a little bit better, but that's, <laughs> we always get that retroactively looking at a race. Coulda, shoulda. And then we get to all of the DNS. So, in all, 10 cars actually failed to finish. But, uh, Bill Elliott, Daryl Waltrip, Morgan Shepard. Oh, let's see if we can find Bill Elliott's crash. So I don't remember, I don't remember seeing that. Sorry about that. All right, let's see what happened to old Bill, awesome Bill from Dawsonville. I think this might have been one caution that we saw all the skid marks in the uh, tunnel turn, but I never actually saw what it was. Ah, these cars look so good. This mod, it is like the oldest mod for NASCAR 2003. The pits made it in like 2005. They were the first group to figure out how to make a car mod. Oh, there was a big crash, and then, yeah, I think he's going to get collected in it. Oh, Morgan Shepard. Man, that was a big hit. Let's see what happened to Shepard there. All right, Morgan Shepard's up ahead of the 26. They come into the tunnel turn. Oh, and he gets clipped by Kenny Schrader. Out into the wall. And then Bob... It, or Bill Elliott. Yeah, and that's uh, Daryl Waltrip as well. So that took out a couple cars. Interesting. Interesting. All right. But that was those three. And Buddy Boys, he had a piston issue eventually, which got him out. And uh, Randy LaJoy had issues all day. Rick Newsom, Gearbox, Benny Parsons. Yeah, I didn't see Benny. And Chet Phillip finished 125 laps down. I guess he... Uh, Still finished. Michael Waltrip with 39th retiring. And then Terry Labonte with that ignition issue early on. Ah, what a what a race from Pocono. There's Dale Earnhardt supposedly jumping out of his car and finishing things up. And there he is, the man himself. But I think that's it. I think that's it. This was a lot of fun. I uh like I like I said at the start of this. I have no idea if I'm going to do more of these, but if you enjoyed it, let me know. And perhaps we will find the next adventure for Buddy Roscoe. I suppose the Sadler brothers might have been impressed with this performance today, so maybe maybe they'll choose to enter him in another race in 1986. If you have any ideas about the one that you'd want to see, let me know. But I think, I think that's pretty much it for now. I hope you all have a good weekend. Rest of your weekend anyway. If you watch the NASCAR race later today, I hope it's a good one. But it probably won't be as good as this one was. I'm sure it'll be fine. But until next time, thank you for watching. I'll see y'all later.